recording. So 290 this morning already? 290 already. What are you going to get up to? 310? Well, I don't know, but he's just had to cut my breakfast because it was a bit big. I had too much, too much carbs in that breakfast. What I was, was your, fine eating it. Wait, what was your breakfast before he cut it? Uh, so it was two slices of toast with almond butter, 150 grams of cream of rice with a banana and blueberries, uh, 100 or oh, 200 ml of egg whites, two whole eggs, and 100 grams of steak. <clears throat> and I'm fine eating it, and I don't mind, but he's trying not to let me feel too bloated too often. And yeah. that breakfast is a big one. It makes me get That's bloated. That's a big breakfast, man. I don't, yeah. think, I don't know if people listening realize how much 150 grams of cream of rice is. It's fucking big. That's it a big right hole. Up. Yeah. 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 So that's um, there. So we've got rid of the toast for now, just for the next week. All right, Annika. <laughs> I want my headphones. So you can't even listen to that. Um, oh, yeah. What's her yeah, breakfast? Just, what's what, what's well, Yannicka's breakfast? Yeah, what's her breakfast? Oh, she's got the piece of cake. Coffee I forgot. And cereal. Coffee and cake. Yeah. Coffee that's and right. Cake, that's normally. right. Yeah. Sure. And, then, uh, and then normally a couple of hours later, there's some toast with either, you know, banana and peanut butter, or she has tuna and mix, you know, like the tuna sandwich spread. With like mm-hmm. peppers in it, which is quite nice. Yeah. Mayo one. Oh, tell her I was watching a video of Norway and it's absolutely beautiful. I had no idea how nice it was. So Fuad was watching a video of Norway and he said it's absolutely beautiful and didn't realize how nice it was. It is very nice. It's the best country on this planet. It's apparently the best country on the planet. Well, everybody we, says that. Everybody well, says that about their home country. Yeah, they do. When, when, this bloody, when we can travel again, we should all go to Norway, go to the cabin. We should all go stay in the cabin. Now Honestly, it looks amazing. I'm like, I, when I was watching, I don't know why. Cabin. What'd you say? What did you say? James going to build his own cabin. Well, maybe one day. But we should go to the cabin and do and film. We should okay. film us in the cabin. We should I'm do in. like a survival series where we survive in the cabin and we're not allowed to go and buy groceries. We I will to, like, hunt fish. I'll die first for sure. I will yeah. die first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think we should do it. I think that'd be a great little. Like, we have to survive for ten days. James, you no... always you always say we should do stuff, and we never do anything. You haven't come to Canada. Because COVID, yet. It's because of COVID. Like we can't go nowhere. Why can't you say? Are we not allowed to say that? No, but I don't want to say it because it's such. It pisses me off saying it now because it's just pissing uh, me off. Now. It's just going on forever. I'm just like piss off. I know. Well, you're lucky though. You get to. They're let you use the gym though. Well, yeah. No, I'm quite lucky. It's very so dark in here. I haven't got a light. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm lucky. I am lucky. But it's so boring. I have to say, using the gym yeah. without people around is a totally different feeling, and it's not very satisfying. Yeah, I, I kind of feel that way too. Some people always say like, oh, isn't it great training by yourself? And I'm like, I kind of like feeding off the energy of other people in the gym if they're training hard. Yes. So well, it's like, And, and bodybuilding is a competitive sport. So you're used to being around other people working hard because the whole point is you're trying to be the best off. Mm. And when you're in a, in, a, in a place where there's no people to kind of level, like kind of uh, see where you're at against, there's not, there's not much motivation from that. Like I, I really like seeing someone challenging themselves because then I want to go and do better than them. Because it is, there is a certain level of ego to bodybuilding. It is about comparison. Because otherwise, we wouldn't do it. And it's hard now. I, there's nothing uh, to compare to. That's what you're saying so about, I tra- about, about training with Hunter. Well, yeah, yeah. And I, well, I train. I still train on my own right out here in my little unit. But it, I found it's much better when I have Denise there with me. No, I, I don't mean just to spot me. If I'm going to go for like a heavy set of deadlifts, I don't need. She can't spot me on that anyway. But I ask. I just text her. Hey, can you come out? I'm going to do my heavy set. Yeah, because my ego will fucking step up. You're like my girls yeah. here. I got my girls here. I got to show her. Yeah, like if she brings Phoenix in, and I, I'm like, okay, time to go. like no fucking no hiding. Yeah, There's someone watching. You know that's not that sounds fucked up. It sounds funny, but I Summer doesn't go to the gym with me a lot. But when she does, I find that I train I train harder. You're like because yeah. it's like it's like first date. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like <laughs> no, it's not even like first date. So it's like when you first saw them for the first time. Again, yeah, and yeah. You, and you've got to make your balls as big as possible. You got to be like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, remember, like, I remember those days. It's like you're you're like, look what I can do, but she doesn't really care. But in your head, they, 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 they've known you for like God knows how long. They forgot. They yeah. don't give a shit. They don't you're like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so going that back, whole, listen, uh, going back to your breakfast. How the yeah, fuck man. do you? That's a lot of fucking food, man. How are you getting that all in? I'm I'm well, I've got good appetite, man. I've always had a really good appetite, but yeah. that's why I don't have the smallest stomach because I but, have got good appetite. Yeah, so we, there's this catch twenty two. I, I could probably afford to eat a little bit less at times and look after this a bit more. Um, yeah. And that's obviously where Patrick's a bit more on it than other coaches because other coaches in the off-season don't mind how far you go. And listen, some people can put it right in. I I think any damage I do in the off-season will carry over into prep, so I have to be a bit more careful with those kind of things. So 200 mils of egg whites is like under a cup, so it's like six egg whites. Yeah, and then and there's then two whole eggs. And 100 grams of steak is only like four ounces. 
Yeah, so it's not but I do have. I, I, that's raw. That's that's raw weight. Right? That's raw weight, right? Oh, so it's yeah. even less. So it's like three it's ounces cooked. Yeah. Yeah, and then I uh, I have like half a scoop of whey isolate just after cardio, which is prior to that. Yeah. So that's where the protein kind of comes from. So it's so more the carb. It's my, more the carbs than anything. No, but I was just thinking, like, I think part of the reason why I was so bloated all the time or why my stomach grew is my protein amounts are so high. Yeah. So you have a massive breakfast, but your protein count is low. Yeah, it's relatively low. So my breakfast is minus the toast. So I'm now, my breakfast is the same as James's after it's had the toast taken out, right? Yeah, yeah. Almost identical. I just use bison, not steak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But by 11 o'clock, I eat my breakfast about nine o'clock. By 11 o'clock, I'm good to, I'm fucking, yeah. I'll eat again. Well, when Patrick, when Patrick gave me my diet, that like when we were thinking about working together, it was 150 grams of cream of rice. And I was like, this is a massive bowl of cream of rice. But there was only like uh, eight egg whites or something for my protein because yeah, he's yeah, trying to keep my yeah. protein really low. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I was the same thing as you, Ben. I would eat it and I would be full for like half an hour. And then I'm like, okay, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah and also because so the, that's what we were saying on the last episode. Remember, we said about oats and cream of rice and which one's easier. Yeah. yeah. And also because of uh, the fat content, like I have one, I have one whole egg, not two. I think the fat is also, the don't slow yeah. down as much. Like I barely add any additional fats to any meals. I have yeah. bison and salmon, but yeah. I don't. I'm not adding like peanut butter. I'm not adding almond butter. I'm not adding avocados. Well, yeah. that's the thing that usually fucked me was I do a lot of protein, so I would do like 16 egg whites or something like that, or you know, I do six whole eggs and whatever, and then yeah. do the cream of rice, and also in the cream of rice, I'd throw a tablespoon of peanut butter. Yeah. So you got all the fat from the eggs, then you got the fat from the peanut butter, then you got the then you got to digest all the carbs. Yeah. So I felt strong as fuck with all the fat though, but you just can't get through the food as easily. Yeah, yeah, it just yeah. slows the transit down a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, like, it can compile. I think if you're having, like, it's almost like you've got to have fat in some meals and then, like, every other have the fat lower. Yeah. Just so it doesn't yeah. pile up too much. So, like, meal one, heavy, you know, high fat, meal one. Meal two, less fat. Meal three, maybe a fat's in again. You know, I find, it depends where it's around training and stuff as well. I find that lately, if I keep my higher fat meals to after training, not the first meal after training, but after that, yeah. So like, so like if my post-workout meal is meal three, usually I'll start adding more fats in meal four, five, six. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I'm okay. Six is, right? normally, six is normally my like fattiest meal. Yeah. 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 The yeah. fats go up as the four, five, six increase. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think this came at a good time for me because I'm supposed to keep my protein lower anyway to keep my kidneys healthy. Yeah. Of course. So I've been doing kind of Patrick style where the proteins lower and the carbs are carbs are more. Yeah. I feel like I can crush food though. Like when I do like, you know, what's, what's like one chicken breast is usually like four to four to six ounces. So it's yeah. like, it's like 250 grams. Maybe if I do like yeah, a, pre-cooked, ch- yeah. You, no, I do them cooked. So it's probably only about 200 cooked, isn't it? I would yeah. Say. It's like 200 cooked. So yeah. 200, two, I think 200 cooked is eight ounces, right? Mm, so it might be less. Maybe 400, 470, 400, 450 grams is one pound is one is 16 ounces. Mm. So 225 would be eight, right? Yeah, so it's seven. Seven ounces is 200 grams. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so I'm doing like 200 grams, maybe a little less, 150 to 200. And I'm doing like 350 grams of rice. And I'm only adding a tablespoon of olive oil and I'm fine. I burn through it. Yeah. I I don't think the fat, like that kind of fat, like a tablespoon of olive oil does anything to me. I think it's when I start... I think it's when I start using things like avocado because the fiber in the avocado kind of might slow me down too. Yeah, when when the fat has its own when it, the fat's present in a in a like the fat is present with a carbohydrate that contains fiber, like that's when. Yeah. So like even nut butters, nut butters I find transit slower than yeah. say olive oil or macadamia nut oil. Yeah. But then nuts are slower as well. Yeah. Because they're not extracted. The oil isn't extracted. It's yeah. everything. It's all the constituents. It's the the carbs and the, the fats. Yeah. So yeah, I, I noticed that. Do you find that too, Ben? If you just do fat, if you just do an oil instead of like a, a fatty. Fat? Yeah. Outside of uh, eggs and beef and salmon, I'll just use macadamia oil. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it just is much easier. Yeah, it doesn't affect me at all. Yeah. So James, you said you're up to 290. How far do you yeah, think you're going to go? No, 292, wasn't it? Or 290. Uh, two, 290 this morning. 290. Oh. Um, I don't know. Uh. Compositions are. I haven't really looked at myself for a few days. I'm kind of getting hairy now. You can't see through it. No, when you're like so hairy, you can't see underneath. I like that when I'm fat though, because then it, it makes you look leaner. 
well, you can brush the hair in certain styles. So you can do like abs on your body. You can like. <laughs> I, I think Luke used to. Didn't do Anton? Well, didn't like, Anton do that? Didn't Anton? Didn't, didn't Anton shave like shave the abs? Yeah. In his... yeah. So I'm, I'm at that point where I'm not really looking at myself. Um, but I'm not a fat fuck yet. I'm not a fat fuck yet. We uh we I want to know what you think. So we had a conversation yesterday about you and Akeem. Yeah. Do you think you can beat Akeem? Yeah, I think so. I think I could probably take him in some back shots. I think he smoked me from the front. That's what I said. I said from the back. I said from the back, James got him. I said from the front, might be tougher. Yeah, he smoked me from the front. Oh, Look, who's yeah. got who's got lats popping out like Akim? Who's got arms like Akim? <laughs> His yeah. front relaxes. Let's, just, let's, let's yeah. just be honest. Yeah, they, they can't deny him of what he is. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The front shots are retarded. Like, they're so good. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, what's going on? Anything new this week? Not a lot, man. Not a lot, really. Um, what is going on? I don't even know what's going on. And anything new this week? How did your seminar go with Patrick? Good. Good. Yeah, we was, got the second one. Sorry. You said it was four hours? Four and a half hours, yeah. Was it all just Q&A? Yes. Like people, did you just like hit the camera and everybody No, started- we broke it up. We broke it up into uh, sections. Basically, we broke down. We did like it was just off-season, like foundation stuff. Um, so we just covered like how to set your base before starting off-season. Like what what parameters you want to have in place first. You can't just start an off-season. Yeah, yeah. Um, why you do that? And so we did like maybe an hour talk on that, and then we did a fifty-minute Q and A pertaining to that. Oh, so you guys just and did then like. We- so you did your own talk, like you did your own, like you we, guys- we, we, yeah, we, we came up with a, a schedule basically because we were like, this can get messy. Yeah. So, so we, we gave a schedule basically, um, which I sent out the day before for people to, to follow along. And then we just ha- had like intermissions with Q and A's along the way. And then at the end we did an open um, kind of Q and A right at the end for yeah. basically anything, anything goes, uh, yeah. but it was four and a half hours and it was exhausting. Yeah. Yeah, I did that with John. We we but I didn't do like you know, it was more like I was just a host. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. John did the seminar portion. He spoke for half an hour and then or for 10 minutes he did like he did nutrition. He did we did like two or three nutrition things and then we did Q&A after each of them. Mm-hmm. That's cool. But it felt weird for me cuz I'm like I'm not really doing anything. Like I'm kind of just the host like i'm kind of like you become the host you become that guy <laughs> <laughs> this is it you're going to get hired all over the world just to know? host just to host <laughs> shit. yeah yeah things ain't even bodybuilding you'll be at people's weddings and shit. <laughs> honestly anyway you know what maybe we should just get some questions it's... i was going to say one thing before we moved on uh, yeah just noticed that sergio sergio is obviously being trained by john now. yeah cool. i heard about that i that's wonder cool. if that i wonder if that's guy's influence maybe because you know, he switched guy, over as well, didn't he? Yeah, guy went to John this year and had some really, really good progress. And I know Guy and Sergio talk a lot, so I wonder if Guy kind of let him there. Yeah, maybe. I think it's good. I'm surprised you didn't ask because you, you, you did the uh, episode the other day with the critique thing. I thought you might I, did, I didn't know. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know till yesterday. Summer, I think Summer said something to me about, about them working together, and I was like, uh, okay. John, I feel like John's training is really good for bodybuilders. Yeah, I just feel like it's very well thought out, and a lot of bodybuilders just go too far. Yeah, that was always my fault, and John was able to pull me back and just get the most out of my body without yeah doing too Do you much. Mean John's doing his training and diet, or is he still with just us? Training, just, just training, no, just, just training. training. Which I think I'd is, love to do a session with him. I'd love to do a session with John. I don't know if I don't know if you would like it. I, I, I like listen. I'm not like a one trick pony, man. I've got some, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't mind a bit of change sometimes. I am up for it. But I don't know if it's hard. I'm, I don't know if it's hard enough for you. Yeah, but I've, something I learned last year is also it isn't just how hard you work, it's how smart you work. And yeah. I noticed that there was periods with Patrick even that were very scaled back. And I thought, hmm, this isn't very, you know, intense. Yeah. Um, but it was beneficial. So, you know, my. Well, I said this before. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Ben. Well, I was saying Luke and I used John's training. A lot of times, um, especially when Luke was with Granite, yeah, and we had a we, we would use John's training for our deload periods, yeah, because they were very regimented and very controlled, and and it kept us from going fucking bananas, which yeah, you know that's kind of what we wanted to do, and it was it was it was productive, like you said, that pullback becomes productive, yeah, down the line. For me, yeah. I remember the very first time I went to train with John, we were done, and I was like. 
and all I had I had seen of John was like those videos where he's like uses a cattle prod. Yeah, you know, you know the videos where like he's using a cattle prod and they're going crazy and they're puking and they're doing like, yeah, like making Evan sick and people like that. Yeah, so I get there and I'm like, all right, I'm in for like this hell workout, right? And we do it, and I'm like, that wasn't that bad. And, but what I noticed is even though the workouts weren't that bad, I was getting better and better because it was what I needed. I needed somebody to go, Hey man, you're fucking doing way too yeah. much. It's like John's so, principles always never dig a hole too deep. You know, he's always said that like, exactly he'd rather, true. he'd rather you chip, chip a little bit into the hole, but then come out of the hole massively. Yeah. So you progress. He likes that whole one step down to two step up rather than the other way around. But like he was always, that's why he's adamant on intro workouts and stuff. I know like, obviously he did have to sell them and stuff, but he did used to use plasma and stuff back in the day. Yeah. yeah so he yeah. was very much about recovery, move forward, recovery, move forward. So imagine his training coincides with that. He doesn't want to go into training and actually take you all the way down into a hole that you can't get out of. That's right. Very methodical. Very methodical. It's funny you said that about intra workouts. I always thought that was like a theory based thing and not a science based thing. It's totally science based. John actually pulled up a study, and I think is a. I don't. I don't think it's just one study, but he pulled up one of the studies uh, during our seminar, and it showed the difference in hypertrophy when using EAAs alone. And when you're using, using EAAs and carbs. And is, that the, of the sh- is that the shuffling? Is that how the, the carbs? I don't, I don't want to sit here. I don't want to sit here and pretend yeah. to answer it because I'm not a science yeah. guy. All I do, I, all I know is I remember the seminar study that he brought up and it showed three groups, guys that, stood up, guys that trained with no intra workout, guys right. that trained with just EAAs and guys that trained with EAAs plus carbs. Yeah. And the EAAs plus carbs group made the most gains. And I was like, oh, this isn't just somebody's because I for I thought it was just John's theory. I thought it was like, okay, you're training, yeah. feed the muscle while you're training. I thought it was like just his kind of thought process, but it's actually been studied. So the interesting part now would be is it because the carbohydrates are calories, or is it because they generally have a mechanism of action during training? And I'm not gonna say any of us know that. It'd be it'd be cool to know whether it's because they help a process. I would guess it was because it was helping drive nutrients. I mean, Ben That's why that, that's why I would have thought. Yeah, that's why Ben, you might know the answer, no? You, you, uh, yeah, again, I don't want to put an answer without mis- a misquote or study, but yeah, if it, it's a mechanism thing rather than a, a calorie rather, thing. Than, rather than a calorie thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would assume too. So yeah, because it, it, even if you had the same amount of calories, it, and then again, this is my understanding. Say you had four hundred grams of carbs a day, and they were spread evenly throughout your day, but none in the training versus. 200 ca- 200 grams of carbs through the day and 200 inch or you know around your like, around your workout but, yeah. but you put the yeah. 100 grams of the workout that's more beneficial to the hypertrophy hypertrophy response than having them evenly through yeah. the day that's my understanding it's a nutrient timing thing this is where i think it's a calorie thing uh there are coaches and john was one of, john used to do this and he might still do it that use i remember he had one athlete he was using up to 150 grams of carbs during training wow that is a calorie thing because he's trying to purposely yeah. load carbs. You know, they might've been using insulin beforehand, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But now like what I'm doing is like just 20 grams, you know, there's like, yeah, I, shot I, yeah. I was going to say the, it's around 20 to 30 grams is, is all you really need. John, John said the study was, was 40 grams is what they used. Okay. But yeah. I think it, it obviously depends on the size of the person too. And yeah, it's yeah. not it's not huge amounts. It's not like no. I, I I know I said a hundred, but it's not yeah. that kind of those numbers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember I remember Pat like when I if I ever have a question, I kind of just ask Pat, and he kind of has an answer normally. And I think he said something along the same lines. You know, you only yeah. need around thirty to forty grams of carbohydrates around that training window to do to facilitate those processes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, okay. Let's get into some questions. It's... When is James coming to Canada? <laughs> when, when, listen, as soon as, I, honestly, like, I'm just, as soon as we're all vaccinated, it seems, because that's the only thing that's going to let us bloody travel. What's going on with you guys over there? You know what today started for us? Today is a home lockdown in Canada. Really? Or in Ontario, anyway. So we have got to stay at home now. You're not allowed to leave your fucking house unless you're going to the grocery store or... I don't know. There's a couple other things, but it's like you're that's we're on what, mandatory lockdown we, now. That's what we got here. That's what we got here. Do you really? Yeah. I was fucking blown away. I'm like, so basically we're in jail. Like you're locked in your house. Yeah. I, I spoke to my sister. My sister's in London and she said there were people getting um, pulled over pulled over by the police if they were traveling too far from their home. This is insane. Don't you think it's crazy? It's a bit of a joke. Like I saw, yeah. I went down the high street today. Yeah. Like I drove through the high street. 
and I saw a few old ladies, OAPs, outside the bakery, all with a cup of coffee, each standing there, obviously socialising. And I'm like, too right, let them fucking socialise. They, they're on their last... These guys probably got only about 10 years of their life left. Yeah. Like, 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 fuck are they going to sit at home and do nothing when they can converse with their friends? And I'm just thinking, where do you draw the line? Like I, like, I do understand that people shouldn't be out, you know, getting all in groups and that. But then at the same time, there's life and humanity. And I'm like, where the fuck do you meet? Where'd you go? Yeah. But, yeah. you know, it's hard because a friend of mine's a nurse. Um... Dean and I sometimes train with his missus as a nurse and uh, she said the hospitals are really getting overwhelmed now. Like she are actually, they really? Before, before she said they weren't. First lockdown, she didn't notice it. She said this time I noticed that I made it crazy. And it, the, the sad thing is it's the worst for the cancer patients because they're getting no treatment now. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's it, You wonder like what the counter effect is of people having to stay home and not being around their friends and not being able to socialize and not be able to make money, yeah. not being able to go to work. A lot of depression. A lot of pressure. It's like, you know, I don't know what the right answer is, but all I know is someone saying to me, you can't leave your fucking house. Sound, sound, yeah. Sounds crazy, man. Like, if you said this like 10 years ago, oh, it's, like something, it's like something out of a film, right? Yeah. It's a dystopian, like, fucking, where you see like robots enforcing curfews on the general population. They're like hiding and trying to, like, and then the, there's like this revolt and civil war. That's a film. It's a fucking there was, film. What, there was an advert on Netflix for something called um, um, Songbird, and it's based on in the future, the yeah. near future of now. Yeah, yeah. And it's like week two hundred and something of lockdown, and, yeah. and the world's all yeah. fucked. Isn't it? So they up. call it like don't they call it like Corona twenty three or something? In something that like film. that. Yeah. It, it's yeah. based. It's based on coronavirus, basically. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think the one thing it says is like you're allowed to go to work. So I'm going to go to the gym and be like, this is my work. You know what I mean? Like they can't. Well, that's what I do. That's what I do. Yeah. And I'll, and I'll be filming work because that's what pays my bills. So I'll have a videographer there with a mask on and I'll do what I have yeah. to do. Yeah. I'm not going to go. I don't get furlough. You like, yeah. because there's this thing here, you know, furlough scheme where you pay yeah, yeah. people that aren't working. If you yeah. don't have that, you have to work. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's us. That's yeah. us. I think, Yeah. I uh, I think there's an exemption here in Ontario for professional athletes. There should be so, everywhere. There's one here as well, I believe. But it's just so, the funny thing with bodybuilding is I feel like sometimes they look they, they kind of look at us like it's a mockery, like it's not a real. Well, they. You, know I, I mean? you don't have to call me an athlete if you don't want to, but I'm a professional and I get paid to do well, it. So well, exactly, and so am I. But you know when you're not in because we're not in the Olympics, the government, our government would find a way to be like, you're not a fucking professional, even though yeah. I am. Well, but what I would say is. I don't care if you think I'm an athlete. What you should care about is I have a pro card and I get paid to work out. So That's this is exactly this it. is my fucking job. Like, yeah, yeah. Where'd you put me in that? Though? I get paid to work out. I don't have a pro card, but I get paid to work out. Where, where do I? Yeah. Fall? Well, you do, but well, I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, because you're not a professional, but you are. Because I mean, I get paid competitive, competitively. You're not a professional, but business wise, you're a professional because you get paid to to train through AP. Yeah, that's that's a weird one. It doesn't matter. You live in Texas. You guys do whatever the fuck you want anyway. Yeah, exactly. Texas ain't good. <laughs> I, plus, I, plus, I own my own gym. So I own the gym, so fuck off. <laughs> how long should a mini cut be and how aggressive of a drop in calories would you do? How, how long should a mini cut be, Ben? Uh, as long as is needed until you've achieved what the goal of that mini cut was for. If you're trying what if to resensitize... Yeah, what if your mini cut is just to get you your appetite back and you and it get you back into the place where you can start ramping back up? Then it's as long as that time takes. What is like, the what is the average time for that though? Like let's say I'm oversaturated, I've been eating crazy whoa. calories for a long time and I want to get resensitized. Well, there's, there's there's conditions to it, right? Because then the second part of the question is and how aggressive? Well, the more aggressive, the shorter. That's right. So uh, to how long is a piece of string like i did my seven to ten day deal two weeks ago we pulled off nine pounds but i dropped on a training day 1600 calories yeah yeah right so yeah. i went from five and a half thousand or five thousand or whatever down to three and a half on a training day and the the goal was achieved because i dropped the body weight quick i dropped body fat my condition was good i recovered appetite but if i hadn't if i got to the end of that phase and i was still oh, I I hadn't recovered, then I, it would be extended you know or we'd adjust how aggressive then so you have to set up so the person doing a mini cut would have to set up 
how aggressive they want to be, but the length can't be determined until they feel right. I mean, you can have an idea. You can say, okay, we're going to assess this in 10 days' time. I wouldn't do anything longer, uh, anything shorter than a week. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. If you're if you're very responsive, I think you can reset. Like James, James, myself, you know, like guys with a good amount of muscle tissue that can can train. I think why didn't you, you why didn't you quicker? Why didn't you include me in that? You said James you myself. Eat pizza year round. <laughs> do not. I haven't had pizza in like a fucking four days. Week. Yeah. No. I'm like, saying, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. saying. I'm saying like all the bigger guys, right? Yeah. So if you're 190 pounds and you're only eating 3,000 calories and you're stuffed, it's going to be a different, you know, a different what you, environment. But what do you guys think about fasting? I know it's not I about... I, 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 I don't think it's bad. Like, Dean, again, my friend Dean from the gym, he fasts all, all the time and he looks great. He's I, like 40, I, 48 years old. Looks yeah. tremendous. I don't think it's a bodybuilder. I, I know it's not a bodybuilder thing, but John's got this really interesting study that he always talks about Mm. where guys fasted either once a week or some guys actually fasted like two or three times a week. Yeah. And they didn't lose any muscle. They lost weight because you lose water weight and stuff when you're fucking fasting. But they actually didn't lose any muscle, but they lost centimeters off their stomachs. Yeah. Okay. So, but I, w- I want to see another study that compares doing a, a decently low day on a rest day. So having your calories in a slight deficit in mm. an off season, mm. which is kind of where I'm at. I think James, James is doing an almost similar thing. Your calories are at maintenance. So if not a touch under on a rest day, I think you can achieve the same effect without fasting. Mm. Similar. Don't be wrong. The health that I yeah, think yeah. The, the, some of the health benefits from fasting on an absolute sense are huge. I don't it's like what said, it's not it's not a bodybuilding. It's like you said it's not bodybuilding. If we're talking, yeah, if I'm talking about bodybuilding and gaining muscle tissue, I think there are better options and ways around it. Than what if you're I think, fasting. what if you're trying to shrink your waist though? Listen, I think if you've got, you to... if you got a weight cap on your if you like Chris Bumstead, someone who's got a weight cap, I don't think there's no harm. No, but what if but specifically like someone like me, because I've considered this. What if you're trying to shrink your waist and someone says to you, Hey, look. If you if you take one day a week and don't eat any food, it will reset your gut biome. It will increase your insulin sensitivity. It will help shrink your waist over the course of time, and you're not going to lose any muscle. Do it. I think I think you'd be better off personally yeah. being more stable throughout your off season every day rather I don't, than I, but I think rather than not- pushing food and shoving food in and then needing those days where you fast to, to reset no i think you're right and i'm not saying i would shove food in the other, other days and i do think you're right for the average person but i think if you have a affliction like like it's an affliction but if you have a thicker waist or a bigger stomach and you want to fix it then you maybe you have to do more drastic things yeah i think I th- it's worth doing yeah, just but- because it's another video for the youtube channel <laughs> did I, you see, I, I think did you see I, um uh what's his name brad Rowe? Brad Rowe does a lot of crazy shit with his he diet. He does some crazy shit. I don't know he, what the fuck he, he did. just put up a, he put he up a post. His he put up a post and he said, going on day three of my fast. And I'm like, what the fuck? Day three? He's just fasting yeah. for three fucking days. He doesn't look like he's lost any muscle. And, and then he's training legs as well. So and he's training like one leg. Didn't he yeah. quad? He's a beast. It's always quad, right? Yeah. They're playing basketball. So, okay. So here's another thing I think as well. And I don't know whether this is on topic or not, but I put a thing up about trains of failure and, and this all this yesterday. One of the um, issue or one of the responses I got, a lot of people were like, yeah, like we agree you should train to failure. A lot of people was like, oh, every time I tried to train to failure, I tore a muscle. I got injured. I did this. I did that. And a lot of, I asked a bunch of them. I'm like, was your nutrition perfect? Yeah. Was everything where it needed to be? Yeah. Like, and I'm talking from micronutrients to everything I get else, it. right? I get it, yeah, yeah. Because it's like a lot of people are trying to go flat out in the gym, but they're trying to redline a Ferrari on bald, skinny tires, right? Yeah, I get it. I and get then it. they fucking, the wheels come off and they wonder, oh, training hard and heavy is dangerous. Yeah. I'm like, that's, sorry, I don't know if that's off topic, but it just went off from Brad Rose's injury. Not saying Brad Rose doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Injury. I, I agree with what you're, I actually agree with what you're saying hundred percent, Ben, but I also have been and witnessed in a place where people are, have 
proper nutrition and still tear muscles. Yeah, I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm not like, saying. Like, like, it, like, yeah, Evan did it on the ice, didn't he? Like people, I'm not saying you're bulletproof. I'm not saying that, right? Yeah, I'm not saying yeah. oh, if you eat correctly and don't eat junk, yeah. you're going to be bulletproof. It's yeah. going to happen. I'm saying you can severely limit the injuries you get in if you're really if your shit's on point. Yeah, with your and hydration is probably one of the biggest. Uh, yeah, I bet that's the biggest factor. I, I can biggest. tell you this: I noticed for I, I've had a lot of fucking tears, and some of them more severe than others. I can say half at least came after cheat meals. Because oh, you're like because compensation you're, because your electrolyte balance is all out of whack. You're like yeah, retaining yes. water, and you're like, yeah. I, so I do think water plays a big part in it. But it's funny, you know, people talk about injuries. Everybody asks me the same question: How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? And I'm like, honestly, you don't fucking know. Like I've never been able to pinpoint why this muscle exactly. tore or that muscle tore or like. Didn't you, you know. have it in? Did you not get one in your lat at one point? You said. Yeah, my Terry's major. My Terry's yeah. major tour. What was that? What when did, what was that during what movement? Uh, I was doing a seven plate T bar rows, which is not people would be like, "Oh, that's too much." I had I huh. just did I did six plates on the set before for ten easy ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you do ten easy ones, you're gonna go up, right? Yeah, of course. So and, and the funny thing about that is, and people talk about failure. Oh, you shouldn't go to failure. That happened on the second rep. Yeah. yeah. First yeah. rep, I first rep, I pulled it. Second rep, snap. And that's yeah, if I've ever, if I've ever got injured in the gym or torn a muscle study, it's never been at the failure point. Yeah. It's never the it's struggle been, rep. It's been the beginning of the set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing with my uh, my hamstring doing lying leg curls. Second rep, first rep I was fine. Second rep gone, and I'm like, I think even like when um, when Jansen tore his chest, like I'm, I'm sure like he was running quite smoothly into that set. Yeah, from what yeah. I it was like the second or third, second or third one in, it popped on. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah. yeah. And it went, and it, even Luke when he um. Uh, it was at the beginning, he tweaked of his chest, went, yeah, yeah, yeah. It beginning set. so it's you know, it happens, it doesn't happen when you, I don't know, it, it's odd, it happens almost when you're in your most relaxed state when you think nothing's gonna happen, yeah, strangely, isn't it? Like when you're because you're, you're, I don't know, you're just... I, I actually, I don't know that, Jay. You know what, James? It's funny you said that. I actually remember specifically thinking, for that set, oops, it's my bad. I, I remember thinking a couple times, the more anxious I was, the more like tense my body was yeah, yeah i've yeah. had a couple tears during no time those those times too where like yeah. i wasn't i wasn't relaxed i was either scared of the weight or i was thinking about something else You're like locked up yeah yeah it's yeah. strange well yeah obviously a muscle when it's like locked up it, it can't be lengthened it, and when you do try to lengthen it you're going against what it's trying to do and that's when the pings happen yeah yeah you know? if you had to turn pro turn a pro ufc fighter into a bodybuilder who would you choose to coach and why I only, I only know old ones like Overeem used to be a big guy. Over, yeah, but he's too tall. He would be, he would be hard. Yeah, he'd be like a Quincy Taylor. <laughs> I'd take a Tyron, Tyron Woodley. I don't know any of the yeah. new ones. I'm Joel like, Romero, Joel Romero, Tyron Woodley. Yeah, George St. Pierre's got real low lats. If you look at his back, his lats are like who down. G yeah. G GSP. Oh, GSP. Yeah, yeah. His GSP. lats are really low. His insertions. I can't think of honestly. I can't think of one. I don't think it would be better than Tyron Woodley. Anyway, okay, we'll move on. James doesn't know fighting. Um, how burnt would the popcorn get if you popped all the kennels in the bag? The fuck is this? So he's saying because you know you never popcorn never. I know. Pop, so <laughs> I know. how burnt would it be? Gonna, right. For the final one to pop, I reckon you're going to have at least half of it burnt. <laughs> Stupid. I reckon 75%. 75%. I, we got a bunch of the bags. Yeah, I'm going to try it out after. Dude. Um, Ian, Ben, James, you got to fuck one, marry one, kill one. <laughs> did you do this already? I did do it. With the, I did it with the other guys. <laughs> I didn't watch. I didn't watch because I didn't want to know what happens to my you. Tur you turned out okay, James. Oh, you were, you were, I survived. Everybody married you. Oh. oh, so I either got fucked or killed. You got fucked every time, Ben. <laughs> At least you got fucked. They you find, well, they found you the most attractive, Ben. So that's Ian, not bad. Ian, Ian got killed. <laughs> no, actually, sorry, James. Nick killed you. Nick, bro, what are you doing, mate? Because Nick... well, you... listen, <laughs> you're a threat. That's why. That's you're, what he said. Enemy. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> what he said. Because <laughs> he said, because he said, first he said, I'm going to kill Ian, and I said, why? I'm like, because your competition. And he goes, yeah. I go, well, James is also your competition. So he goes. Okay, okay. I'm going to kill him as well. I'll kill James. <laughs> so <he's> 
Yeah, but Ben, but Ben, you were the cutest, so you get you get to yeah, you're okay. Um, does different cardio have different effects on leg size when in a huge surplus? Stationary bike, stationary bike surplus. versus walking on the treadmill. Basically, he's saying, does it matter what cardio you do if you're in an, in the off season? I do think cycling makes your legs bigger. Do you? John thinks yeah. the you know what. I, well, no, that was during diet. Yeah, I didn't ask. I think in a surplus, I think it would. I think in a in surplus, a surplus, honestly, I think your legs would get bigger. Yeah. Do you know what I like doing? I, I prefer to walk in an off-season in a surplus because I like to get accustomed to holding my moving my body weight. I hate like, the I think it's I think it's good for my body. Like, my lower back's getting less pumped and things like that because I'm getting kind of used to standing up, right? Because mm. I'm, I'm sat on my ass all day if I'm not. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, now's the time for me to stand up tall and walk and, like, Get yeah. acclimatized to this body weight. It's, it's, that's I'm, just a mental thing. I don't know where I'm like, I'm like four out on this, though. I just find walking so boring. I hate the fucking treadmill, yeah. man. I'd rather do the stairs. I'd rather do the elliptical. I'd rather do a recumbent bike. I'm like, yeah, I think I might buy a recumbent bike for the house. But yeah. I'm I, like, so I actually sit, I'm going to buy a recumbent for prep, but yeah. that's by the buy. I think, in an obviously, like I said, I just want to get used to not feeling too heavy in an off season. Yeah, and I think me getting used to walking around, being upright at this weight, yeah, it feels better. So basically, what we're saying though is it doesn't matter in the off season when your calories are high. What you do, just do whatever you like the most. Yeah, I think if you're if you're trying to if you're trying to get your leg size from your cardio, your priorities a little wrong. No, I think he's worried about losing size. He doesn't want to. Yeah, he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't want to lose size. He's trying to figure out how to make sure he doesn't lose any size. And Ma- like ma- maintain his legs in the off season, basically. Um, how do you guys get over the holiday eating hump and switch gears back to it? I didn't come off. Uh, I think I know I what he means. You know, people take yeah, a break. Means. People take a break yeah. during the holidays. They eat some more cheat meals. They relax. And he wants to know how, mean, to get, how to get back at it. That's why I like New Year's resolutions. People always talk about New Year's resolutions and how shit they are, and I'm like, no, nah, it kind of gives people a reset. Yeah, I just get to the point. I just eat enough stuff to the point where I'm like, oh, I've had enough now, and then that kind of puts me back. That's happening. That happens to me if I fuck up. Yeah. If I fuck up enough days in a row, like if two or three days go by and I've fucked them all up, I'm like, yeah. I start, I start to feel really guilty about my myself. Or uh, another I, thing, another thing as well. Sorry, on then. Okay. I was just gonna say if you if you. When you do get given your new nutrition plan, if it's got enough food in it and there's no space for anything else, then you're fucked. You have to eat what you have to eat. Because mm. my my plan now, I couldn't even fit in a chocolate bar if I wanted it. To be honest, no, not after here, not after here in that breakfast. Fuck. No, exactly. I think I think for especially if you're gonna be off and then go back on, when you go back on, it's a hundred percent because having one, if you have like your breakfast and then you're, oh, I'll just finish up a bit of the holiday chocolate over here. No, oh, you're fucked. Yeah. That, the whole day, the whole day is going to fall apart, right? It's going to be yeah. fucking, oh, I'll start yeah. tomorrow. Fuck it. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Who are the top five Middle Eastern bodybuilders of all time? I don't know a lot of the Middle Eastern bodybuilders. Well, we'd have to go Big Rami would be first. Yeah. because he's Right. Eastern do you, do you count? Do you count? Uh, I'm Middle Eastern. <laughs> <laughs> do you I, don't know. I, I don't know am i canadian you or not <laughs> i don't Western know Eastern. do you have two do you have two passports no i was born in canada and i only i'm, I'm a canadian citizen i don't have a, a lebanese a, a passport from lebanon i don't think you i don't think you count them I don't but, think I'm, you count. but i'm but i'm but middle middle eastern descent yeah but <laughs> it, it wipes off after a couple of years <laughs> i think you don't have the password doesn't count well, I can't. I can't speak Arabic, so I guess I don't get. I don't get to fucking. I don't get to yeah, participate. Right. <laughs> so you know what? I think there is a lot more that we don't even know about because there's I, loads. I people doing world championships and stuff. Yeah, they stay amateur so they can pick up paychecks, right? But what about the ones that. we do know? What about those? We got Brahmi, Camille, Camille, Camille. No, what about Samir Benut? Wouldn't he be second? Is he better than Camille? Not no, not now, no. No, but was he? Is yeah, because Camille's amazing, isn't he? Well, what about like Asa Obeyad? I'd be I'd be Asa. Yeah. So so I think we can safely say that he's not as good as Camille because Camille. Yeah, but you like be. Hey, when did you be Asa? This year in Spain? Uh, oh nine, nineteen, nineteen, eighteen. Yeah. 19. I think I think like a sixteen Asa was his best when year. he won the Europa. When he won the Europa. Yeah, like fifteen, sixteen, like back then. When it, was it even earlier than that? Wasn't it like 
Yeah, well, it might have been like it might have been like 13, 14, actually. He was really like seriously, he was savage in his first pro years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I again, like I say, I placed higher than him in a show when he isn't the S of old. So I'm not trying to say anything against him because he yeah. was like he was on front of I remember him being on front of Muscle Development at the time. And I was like, wow, that guy's a freak. He was like the first Kuwaiti freak. We should probably bring him up so people know who the fuck we're talking oh, shit, about. Really, he's really, really good. Shit, um, Luke beat uh, Kevin Froney, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, exactly. He could be, I know, exactly. He could be these guys. As long as it's at the right time in their career, towards the latter half. But uh, SO at the beginning used to look really freaky. Yeah, this is it's actually... He was, the first, think... he was the first Camel Crew guy, wasn't he? Yeah, in one of, yeah. I think he, I think he would be the second best... I don't think he's as good as Kamal. You think Kamal's better? Yeah, Kamal's one of the best to ever do it. He's Dude, 10-time but... world champion. 212. Yeah, but still. It's... No, because it wasn't 212. Because in, in the amateur ranks, the world championships, is uh, he was probably heavier than 212, I would imagine. I don't know. Look at this physique. Let's get it. That's the show that he won. That's the Europa. This is crazy. Cool. Yeah. Very good. Good. No? You guys don't agree? Oh, no, no, no. I yeah, do. Yeah. I, think he's, I think he's. That's why I said that I, 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 when I beat him, I beat a very, not past because he's still very good, but I mean, not in his prime. Yeah, I don't know. That's that was the day. That's, that's what he used to look freaky, like them kind of pictures. That's there. a really thick bodybuilder, man. Like, he's, it's a big dude. He had some much. Check out that off season, the blue, in the Sorry? blue pants. Check out that off season. He had like Paul Dillette qualities, didn't he? This? No, uh, no the, the blue, blue down one, blue pants. and then right one. Where am I? Oh, here, this one. Yeah, yeah. Holy fuck! Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a proper Campbell crew picture, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell! Look at this round. No, he, he round. listen. He was amazing. He said it's really good, but I mean, then I yeah, thought it was as early as I thought it was as early as like oh. oh I swear I saw him on the front cover of magazines at oh seven. It could be. You could be right. I could be way off on my timing. I, I feel I just, like he won. I feel like he won the oh seven Europa. Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I don't doubt that. You could be right. I might be wrong though. Um, I'm pretty sure he did the Cali Pro in 17 as well with Luke. I don't know if he did. Or 18. I don't think he did. I can't remember seeing him no. there. Yeah, Becky did, didn't he? Um, but he was off. I don't know. He could have because it was a big lineup. There was a lot of people in that show that didn't even get a look in that were really good. Oh, what about um, this guy? I forgot this guy. What's his name again? I know that's Photoshop, but. Uh, What's this? Mohammed. Oh, Muhammad. Um, no. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. We forgot about Hadi. Fuck, Hadi could be second. We haven't oh. finished yet. We've forgotten. We just... Nasser is only. I think Nasser is only half Middle Eastern, isn't he? Isn't he half like? Well, he's picture, more. Though. He's more than you. That <laughs> picture, though. Is that real? Is that picture not doctored at all? This one's real. Because huh? I don't remember his arms being as good as that. I do. I think his arms are good. They just didn't wow, have any, they, just did, they didn't have any detail. He looks good there. What is this guy's name? I can't fucking remember now. I know who it is. Uh, my, my, uh... You want to say Muhammad something? I know. Yeah, he had really good quads, really big quads. Really um, big quads, yeah. He'd done the Olympia in like 2005, I think. And now it's annoying me that I can't find his photo. Oh. Anyway. Um... You're saying Hattie's, Hattie's number two, right? Hattie's number two, I think, yeah. It goes Rami. Hattie. But then how do, is Zach Khan considered Middle Eastern? Is he what is he? Is he Indian? Not, 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 not when you listen to him talk. <laughs> <laughs> Birmingham. And then um, um, you forgot about Ahmed Haider too. He was good back in the day. Yeah, very good abs. Zach uh, was really good as an amateur, and then he unfortunately done his legs, tore his quads. Yeah, I think it's hard to come back from massive injuries like that, man. Yeah, he was a freak. And you have, uh, I forgot this guy too, this 212. I mean, Askanani. Askanani, that's right, Askanani. So what are we saying then? Rami, Hadi, Samir Banut? Yeah. Samir Banut, Kamal, um, uh, and this guy. Yeah. Was Samir Banut better than Asa? Like if they stood next to each other on stage today? Mm. You know? No. Like no. in, in eras, of course, Samir Benut was the man. But are we comparing them all to the standard of now? Samir Trudy? Um, Samir Trudy is a great bodybuilder. Yeah. Samir Trudy's really, uh, when he reached, like, when Samir actually nails it, I think he's going to be really. 
He does some great yeah, does body parts. He does all his own diets. He does I never had a coach. This uh, is uh this is one of the guys you're talking about, Ben, that nobody knows. Like I know this guy's name, I've seen it before, but this is somebody who doesn't yeah. compete, who could be really good if he did. I'm yeah, still thinking about, I'm, I'm, you I'm still thinking about Sammy Trudy, like how good he could be. The roundness. He just started his prep. He's just started a prep, so uh I'm interested to see this. He's yeah. already sharp. He's already getting sharp now. I noticed he's looking like a lot harder already. He's got a really good, really balanced physique. Very good leg. Yeah, very good incredibly. Arms. His yeah. legs are phenomenal. His quads are some of the best quads in the world. But I mean, look at it. Like everything is there, right? Great calves, yeah. great quads. If he, if he if he gets absolutely peeled out of his mind, yeah. why can't he win the 212? Because look at it, small waist, flaring right. lats, good arms. And then from the back, is that's not him, is it? No, it's not. He's he is he, he is very thick from the back though. His back is great. His back is great. He's just yeah. got to get peeled, peeled. If he gets absolutely inside out, then he's walking away with whatever show he goes into. I feel like. Yeah, that's a really good physique. Amazing. Yeah. I think this is him from the back. It, he's that's, an old, that's an old picture. He's better than that now. Well, it's sure. also it's also an off season photo. I'm trying to find a good back shot. He's um, he's got no weaknesses. There's some good Middle Eastern bodybuilders, man. It's just, I think they, they take the, it's, I think it's because they take it so seriously there. Like it's an actual, like you know, people consider it a sport there. It's not just a game like here. Like, yeah, yeah, it's true. I think here Isn't people it, just, people consider bodybuilders like a little bit fucked up. Whereas there it's like, yeah, they take a little in, more in pride our, in it. Yeah. In other countries, it's, it's like, we can, be, it's a bit of a mockery, but in Eastern Europe, it's like high level. They look at it like it's proper professionalism. They, they, yeah. they approach it like, look, when Hardy return home and, um, yeah. When Rami returned home, the invite they get, we didn't get that anywhere else in the world. What would it take for us to get that? I remember when I won my pro when I won my pro card, the gym put up a banner that was like congratulations, and that was it. That's like, all, that's, I mean, that's more than that's more than I've ever had. <laughs> I would have loved that. I would have loved the home of. I remember going into like the super gym, and it's like home of Evan Center Party. I that's just pretty cool. That. Yeah. That's yeah. what I wanted. I wanted one of those. Well, now you've said it on the podcast. Maybe somebody will hear you. They'll, yeah. You'll show up at the gym and it'll be there. Home of It's a James. nice banner. Yeah. And, you, and then you have the show, you won it up underneath. Or or if you want a pro show. James, yeah. just make just just make your own fucking banner during this lockdown. Go put it up in Kings. I, I can. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it Nobody but, will know. You know. Fuck it. The, it's the gesture. You bought your own, your, you bought your own belt. Who cares? I did buy my own belt. I have to. <laughs> buy your own banner. Put that up. <laughs> the uh, belt's because the shows didn't give out... I, Listen, the two. This is what. So I did two shows this year, and the trophies were like. Unfortunately, there wasn't one at Spain, and the one it wasn't even a trophy in the British one. So, what do you mean? I'm Wait like, a minute. What do you mean there was no trophy? They didn't give them trophies. No, no trophy. Only the little medallion things. And I'm like, no, I want a trophy. And then Regan goes and wins fucking Romania and gets this beautiful belt. I was pissed. I was like, but Regan, wait, send me that. <laughs> but, but I like the medals better than the trophies. Those little medals, yeah. But that's what everyone gets. We all. Oh, they, everyone yeah. had one. Yes, so, have top five. The medal, yeah. so, but did they? So, but did they do? But they do? Did they do gold, silver, bronze, or are they all just no, the no. same? Uh, I think they're all the same. I think they're all uh, the same. That's so. Shit. I was just like, I would have just liked a trophy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and I, and I noticed this is just I, I'm, I know I'm blabbering on. Uh, like so, Terry Hollands, yeah, well, one of the world's strongest men, uh, British one. I don't know if you know him. Sure. Yeah, I've heard the name. So he's a cool guy. So he's he got a present from his ex missus at the time. Now she's his ex missus. She, he came third in World's Strongest Man twice, and they didn't used to do a third place trophy. So she actually had them made for him. So yeah. He's got the third place trophies. So, you know, I don't mind making my own trophy. What's your opinion on that? That if you win a show I, and you, there's no trophy, would you get your own one made? I don't want to make my own trophy. Okay. I just, Wait, I'll just, then. I would just go online and call, tell everybody the promoter's a fucking cheap bastard. <laughs> cause I'm like, cause that's bullshit. Listen, I promote shows. I would never not have a trophy. I would never, I really, ever. I, I wanted like a King of Spain trophy. <laughs> uh, honestly, a crown. Give James a crown. I want a King of Spain trophy. Still. If I had a tro- if I if I had a pro show, like at our at our at our, uh, we have two amateur shows. Yeah, and we try and do like a pretty nice thing. Like we do, like we have uh, custom medals made. Yeah, and um, we do like nice overall trophies, like like glass trophies and shit. That's cool. But if I had a pro show, I would do a ring. Winner, like the New York Pro Ring, I think is fucking awesome. I think that's, that's a my idea. that's my it favorite. Does, it, it has got some value, doesn't it? As well, it's not not like a it's not like a five hundred pound. See, ring. It's got Ian, a bit of Ian had his on on the Ian wore his on the Olympia stage, didn't he? Yeah, I would too. If I mean, yeah. aren't they worth, aren't they worth a few right? quid as well? Aren't they worth a few quid? I thought they weren't like they're not that cheap. No, they don't look cheap. Up. But I mean, even like when I got my pro card, I got a 
not my pro card. When I won my, the first year I won the nationals, when I won my class, they gave us like, you know, the high school rings that you get. I don't know if they uh, do that. I don't know if they do nah, that. In the UK. Nah, 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 so here they do like high school rings and they got like a, some kind of fucking stone in them and shit. Yeah. I got one of those when I won the heavyweight class back in 2004. That's what I would do if I had a pro show. I think I would not make my own trophy. I'd be like, I'd just be upset that whoever had the fucking show didn't take the time. Yeah, the, the thing is, yeah, we don't get a lot of plaque from bodybuilding. That's why it's that's why it's something uh, uh, small that they should have to do. Exactly, uh, and it would mean a lot because you would always look back at that thing and say that was a time when I was at my top. I think if I was, did you get? Did you go ahead, Ben? Oh, okay, did you keep the big check? I always keep the. I've got them, all my checks are over there in the corner of my the room. The big one, the big one though, the one they give yeah, you on yeah, stage. Yeah, I keep all them. That's your trophy, mate. That that's fucking cool. I love those giant fucking oversized checks. I don't mind them, but I just want like something. I don't know. I don't know. That's why. Well, I you've seen Flex's Flex's trophy cabinets with those. You got with those glass ones, like Fred was saying. They're fucking. Cool. Got, I like the Arnold ones. Nice. Jay, Jay Cutler's Arnold ones. What's that? What's the Arnold one? The glass, like the, the, glass, Arn- the glass. Oh, the glass yeah. vase. Oh, 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 no, the most. Mm. Sorry, these are Arnold ones when he was getting most muscular award as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were cool. They were like the glass, the vase. I don't know, man. I, I think stuff like that is why bodybuilding isn't looked at as professional. There shouldn't be a show. And look, I'm sorry if this is going to offend anybody, but no, this is a personal. It's, it's a valid thing to say. There shouldn't. Valid, you yeah. shouldn't be able to have a show with no trophy. It should not be. Either, either the mm. IFBB should mandate man, mandate that every show has the same trophy, or at least mandate that every show has a fucking trophy, and not so and, like, and not the same my... and not the same medal like one through five all get the same medal. That's not a trophy. Yeah, you have it's to just c- coming from a, a, a you know coming from an athlete. One thing that we do appreciate, and you two say the same, is just something to look at and say oh, that was the time you know that i did well but it's also coming from a, a promoter i promote my own shows i and would never go, i would yeah. never be like oh you won good for you pat you on the back see yeah. you later like i would imagine, those, imagine imagine no sando trophy at the olympia <laughs> exactly <laughs> wait you know one of the biggest things and i i've just noticed well not just noticed but and i know the olympia is an extreme example one of the things that the competitors love the most are the track suits yeah I still, yeah, got, yeah, yeah. I still got mine. You can't, like, if you see one of those guys be like, oh, hey, man, like, uh, you left a trophy back in Vegas. They're like, ah, you go, oh, you left a tracksuit. Like, fuck, give me my tracksuit. That's like, that's yeah. the fucking thing. I think that's why. Sorry. I think mine's hanging. I have my jacket. It's hanging right there. Like, I'd, I'll never, yeah. it's fucking 20 years old. I still wear it sometimes. Yeah. That's why yeah. it was cool. Last, the British Grand Prix before this one, Jordan was sponsoring the show. And Jordan Peters had tracks was made for every athlete. And I thought that's such a good gesture. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Like we, we all went to the press conference in them and yeah. it was wicked. That's a yeah, really, yeah, that's, that's a, be. you know what? That's a big deal because I know what it's like. Like I've wanted to do t-shirts at my shows for the, for the competitors. It's a fucking big expense, man. Just doing t-shirts, let alone I bet, I bet. entire, entire track suits. Yeah. So that shows so, a bit of passion there. Doesn't yeah. Even the They're obviously, yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, what's the optimal way to bring up a lagging body part? So many things to say today, isn't there? Frequency. Frequency. Uh, assuming assuming your selection and execution is correct. It's attention, isn't it? It's paying have, attention, so that's the frequency thing. I had uh, Brad Schoenfeld on the podcast this week who's a PhD in exercise science, and he was like – he had an athlete that he said he was trained – they were training hamstrings three times a week. Yeah. And I found it really interesting. Some of you should go listen to it if you if you want to listen to some of the basics of bodybuilding, but – um he was talking about training when you're sore and he said, it's okay to train when you're sore, which is something I thought was because if you listen to Dorian Yates, Dorian Yates is like, you know, Dorian Yates famous quote is don't train the muscle when it's sore. It's like, it's like opening a wound before it's like healed. Right. And Brad's like, it doesn't matter if you're sore, you can still train the muscle. He's like, the only time you can't train when you're sore is if you're so sore that it's limiting your range or limiting like what you're doing. But yeah. if just, but just because there's a little bit of pain doesn't mean you can't train the muscle. So, well, when you look at say like the Brazilian wellness girls, and you think they have a lower body day four, five, three, four days a week. Yeah, good point. And they got some of the best. They got some of the best developed legs on the planet. You know, you know when I'm a tiny bit sore, so I'm on the down, like I'm just about to come out of that recovery phase. You try and train quads when they're just slightly tender. You get wicked feel contraction. Yeah, if you can yeah. feel them, 
Yeah. If it's slightly, so I'm not talking like the next day where you're yeah, constantly yeah. on the toilet, right? Yeah, like yeah. three days later, they're still a bit tender to touch. You can get a good contraction off of that. I don't know. Yeah. I, this is purely anecdotal. I'm not. No, no, no. Listen, he's saying this, like Brad was saying this, like if it's not limiting your training and it's not limiting the weight you use or anything like that, mm. there's no problem with training when you're sore. That's yeah. what I think. I think for Dorian, with the loads he's using, he probably needs to be fully recovered, right? Probably just to actually do the movements, yeah. But and maybe that maybe that comes down to as well. Like, let's say you are uh, someone who follows progressive overload to the T. That's something that you won't probably follow because the soreness, like you say, will hinder your ability to yeah, increase yeah. the weight. That's right. But if you're approaching it simply from a training is training perspective and you get good response from training generally, then maybe that's fine. Yeah. So I think it comes down to your own format. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. But so like I'm doing, I'm doing hamstrings and back probably every fourth, them. every fourth day they get yeah. hit. Yeah, and that's what and they're, they're responding. They yeah, grow. that's going back to this question about the leg and body parts. That's I think the number one answer. But would Patrick say that? Because doesn't Patrick say like it's not necessarily about more volume; it's just about better training. Yeah, yeah but then he does, add, he does. He does add. A, yeah, if that. But then if you're doing that perfectly, then where do you go from there? That's when the frequency goes up slightly. That's, that's um, why I said assuming assuming your assuming yeah. your exercise selection and execution is where it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then your next. Then you go frequency. Frequency after that. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Um. Bodybuilders are notorious for dropping their trousers and posing in the gym. Where is the most interesting place you've ever dropped trow and posed? Butlins. Butlins. Where's Butlins? What are you talking about? Ben, that? Knows, where, ben knows where Butlins is. What's Butlins? Yeah, I don't know Butlins. It's a holiday, like like Disney World, but without Disney. <laughs> it's it's like a cheap. It's a really cheap, nasty, STD ridden place. Why did first. you drop your trousers there? What did you do? What were you doing? Because I was there for a stag do, and my friend who's who was getting, I think it was my friend who was getting married. There was a bunch of women, obviously flirting with all of them. And uh, he said to me, he said, she said that you don't train your legs. So I was like, fuck off. So I pulled my trousers down, got my legs out, obviously, to show her that I do train my legs. And then, obviously, it went from there. But that was, uh, yeah. So basically, I was they, then, they, 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 then she said, they said oh, you don't train your cock, so you fucking... Well, she came, over, <laughs> she came over and spanked my legs. She did come over and spank my legs. Is this so. before you were with Yannicka? <laughs> Uh, I think so, and even it didn't go. Nothing else happened after the leg spank, so it was fine. Okay. <laughs> Just covering my own ass there. I didn't even realize. You know, the first thing I thought was bodybuilding. Like, you know, I've dropped my fucking pants at the airport. I've dropped my pants at like numerous hotels and the lobbies. And then I thought, when I used to drink a lot, I used to drop my pants in the fucking bar. Like Before, I would be in just because I was you, just because I was drunk as fuck. But you flashing leg, or you just getting penis just, out? What are you doing? The, the second one more so really but i wouldn't be totally naked i'd be like i'd still have my boxers on but i was like hey yeah you're just so out, you're so pissed you don't give a fuck yeah i used because i used to get so fucking drunk i couldn't i didn't know what the fuck i was doing so i would just yeah, yeah summer my my wife would always say like don't get him drunk if you get him drunk his pants are gonna come off so. I did this at uni, but I, when I was at uni, I was like 130 pounds, right? So there was no, there's nothing bodybuilding related. But I used to get so wasted that I'd turn into Frank the, Frank the Tank. You seen old yeah. school? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would go, I would just jump up, like, we're going streaking around the quad and everything would come off and I would just go running. That's how um, I was. Yeah, I think it's me. I don't know what it is about fucking guys, man, but that's how I was too. Yeah. James, where do you keep going? No, I just, uh, because... You didn't text? I'm, 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 no, yeah, I've got uh, Rudy actually is messaging me in a minute. So I'm just trying uh, to say, that. yeah, yeah, so don't worry. I'm not disappearing anyway. Tell Rudy to. Tell Rudy, fuck off, Rudy. Oh, yeah, Rudy, I fuck off, Rudy. It's because um, <laughs> I, I keep doing this on my laptop. But I, it always, for some reason, when I use my laptop, I get a lot of lag. So I don't use it no more. Oh, okay. It's really odd. My phone has a lot better connection to Wi Fi than my, my PC. So. Um, I just texted him and said, stop messaging James. I don't get this. I don't get this question. Pick the best fantasy. Gay or lesbian couples in bodybuilding? So he's just trying to say, who would you like to see be do the gay act, either man or woman? I've never so thought you... that in my life. Ben, what no, two birds would I... you like to see having a kiss? That's what? basically what he's asking. That's what he's asking. I, I could probably think of a couple. Who? Uh, probably someone like Oxana because she's quite fit. 
yeah. jumping oh, around. Wow. Is that Christine? Is it Christine Nunn? That girl, she's she's free. Who's that? Who's that? Just, you're gonna get yourself easy trouble yeah. now. Go ask a list of oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, mate. It's easy, but I know I understand. You're both married, so you can't like not say hey, too who's much. The, uh, who's the uh, mutant chick as well? Oh, what the mixed race lady, or uh, she's like Jamaican or something. She's quite nice looking, pretty one. No, uh, she's not Jamaican. Uh, well, no, you know what I mean. I, <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to sign her. Wait, she's not Jamaican. Okay, sorry, I don't know. Fuck, she's got the red hair. Oh. It's yeah. different colors all the time. She always changes it. Yeah, oh. I don't, is she Jamaican? Oh, I, I, I think I'm thinking of someone different. She's like, a, like she's like a tan skin. She's not. Yeah, well, it sounds like we're stepping on leg shells. Like we're being really careful here. <laughs> we're like we don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, obviously, is, is she, it's a black lady that I'm thinking of. Uh, but she's, no, she's, not, skin. she's not black. No, no, oh, no, no. I think of someone totally different. Uh, yeah, I think I'm thinking of Lola Montez. I don't know who Lola Montez oh, no. is. Okay, okay, she's she's one of their athletes. So okay, right, I'm getting man. I'm getting divorced next week. So <laughs> if, um... <laughs> trouble. I'm back James, on the market. James, yeah. James, you're showing it's... me who's this is now. This is Lola Montez. Yeah, but that's not the... <laughs> Lola Montez is a famous woman as well. But there's another woman. Lola okay. Montez is a, there's a song, isn't there? There's a song about her. By I'm like I'm like, what the fuck are you looking at, James? Who is this Lola Montez woman? It's, this is my ideal woman. This is my <laughs> Yannicka is a bit like that to be fair. Wait, 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 who's the... Is this Lola Montez? Yeah, I thought you were talking about this bird. No, it's no. AZ, AZ Fitness, whatever her name is. AZ is her oh, okay. Instagram handle. I, I thought you were talking about Lola, so I was no, That's that. Arizona. Oh, maybe it's not AZ, but it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely AZ something. Well, we're digging holes for ourselves in our relationship. One second, I got a better idea. What about what this, AZ Fitness? Do you know what she... I, I don't know what you're really talking about, man. digging holes. I feel like we're going to show our partners whose Instagrams we've been looking at. No, is this what, I don't mean it's just... Is this what you're talking about? No, it's the most, I mean, she, she's, she's well, we can still check me. this one. We can still check this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, she, yeah, she, she counts. So she oh, is. Okay, sake. I got to get this. I'm going to get quick. myself get quick. Quick. <laughs> Go back, go. Okay. Get out. <laughs> Troublesome. Troublesome. I'm not That's getting divorced over this shit. Fuck you guys. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> ben, that's your fault. Um... Where'd you come up with AZ Fitness from? I don't know, but I wasn't far off. She was pretty tidy, so I'm taking yeah. that one still. She was close. Uh, she was close. Her, her and Kristen Nunn, there you go. There's two. We're, 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 all adding, we're all adding AZ Fitness now. Who's Kristen? <laughs> 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 and you should all do that. Go and all add us. Right? Who, what the fuck Who's is going Chris, on? Christine Nunn. Who's Kristen, that? So it's K-R-I-S-T-E-N. Oh, Kristen. You look confused me. I don't know who all these people are. I'm lost. I'm lost, boys. I'm lost. She's like a real badass American chick that has guns all over the place. This girl? Oh, that's what you like these days. Yeah. Don't say anything bad. Let's just be nice and polite. She I didn't say anything. Up, but it's fine. She would kick the shit out of me probably with those pipes. She's, she's fucking jacked. She's got some arms, but... Me! She's fucking... She is jacked. Holy shit. She's jacked. She's she's jacked. She will smash me up all over the place. <laughs> I'm not even getting involved. Look how big she is. I'm not pissing her off. Why does she compete? That's so that's I don't, I don't know. That, that I mean that's intimidating. She looks good to be fair, she looks good. That's not the picture I had in mind. <laughs> You're thinking of one of the ones in a dress or something, I assume. I don't know what I got something nice about our shaved head. Get out so of wait, this. So wait, 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 wait. My food's coming to get out of this. Yeah, and, and this question has gone well off track. <laughs> My food's question, coming. <laughs> yeah, the, the wait the waitress is coming. You can't let her see this. <laughs> She's gonna walk in and be like, "What the fuck are you looking at?" Oh, the fucking door's there. Normally, I have it set the other way. All right, every, every, every episode, we're looking at either French <laughs> knickers or who would fantasy birds. Like, it's, no, remember yeah. the three episodes ago, we we're looking at guys. Oh, we were. Oh, yeah, and you liked a few of them. No, <laughs> oh, I don't think so. You said he's a good-looking man. I like a few beards while we're at it. I have no problem, uh, uh, man. We, you know, we turned that off right in time. We did. Thank you, man. We turned that off right <laughs> fucking dead. I could hear it. I heard the microwave ping. <laughs> well, I'm just jealous that my girlfriend's not bringing me any food because I'm due. Well, mine would if I asked, but anyway. Um, anyway. If, you could be, if you could be a fly on the wall for anyone's training sessions leading up to the O, past, present, who would you choose? Who would you choose? I'm really not interested in anybody. I don't know. That's just me. I don't want to watch anybody train. No, nor do I. I'm doing my own. Come on, I don't even. I'm bored of the gym. You know when I used to watch when I used to watch Ronnie Coleman's uh, video or like Dorian Yates' video is a little different, but 
when I used to watch watch Ronnie's video, I would watch, I would fast forward past the training parts and watch the food parts. Yeah, because you know that's what's making the beast. I want to watch him uh, eat. I want to. What's this all. motherfucking guy eat? I don't want to. You know, what is he putting in that body? That's what you it was. The, you like know what food. got me? It used to be the grits, and then he put that sliced fake cheese. I on did top. that. I, that's the oh, shitty oh. cheese. I love that oh. cheese. That's I made that. Cheese. Dude, I, I I used to make that meal. I'm like, I'm gonna get big like Ronnie. And then he'd add, he'd do <laughs> at nighttime. He'd do like six scoops of uh, six scoops of sim for six. Yeah, and a fucking and a <laughs> scoop of Nesquik just because it wasn't. The sweet Nesquik, enough. the Nesquik was amazing. Just I'm because like... it wasn't sweet enough. Why would you do that? that have you tasted sim for six? It is literally like Nesquik. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's, he has got a sweet tooth because he was putting that squeak in after as well. Did I ever tell you what we did to a friend of mine? We I used to be when I was sponsored by Muscle Tech. You do. A friend of mine was just getting into bodybuilding, and me and this other friend who's just a prankster, right? He's like, let's switch out the protein. Okay. We dumped we dumped all the chocolate protein out of the Nitro Tech and filled it with Nestle Quick powder. And we gave we're like, hey. I got an extra tub this month because I was sponsored, right? So I'm like, yeah, yeah. take this one. You can have it. So he takes it. That's so good. It was the funniest fucking thing ever. He was downing shakes every day. He's like, he would come to us and be like, this is so delicious. Like this protein's fucking awesome. And he's like, I put on like eight pounds. Yeah. <laughs> so, you probably made him, you probably, you probably made him diabetic. He said that to us. <laughs> After Dude, like, after like, guys. after like two weeks, we told him he's like, yeah. you mother, it's like you motherfuckers. He's like, he was probably getting fuck. really, uh, yeah, he was probably getting proper amped up, like incident response of that, and then going. Whoosh. It was you can't like, mess with another man's gains, man. There's a few things you can't do. You oh can't no, it was fucking fucking. It was. What hilarious. about this then? What about just having Nesquik? Yeah, Nesquik with egg whites. Yeah, you can do that. Why not? Yeah, that's, what, that's a good Luke little mix, did. isn't it? That's sure. what Luke used to do in your season. That's a good powder. He made points. sense for that. See, yeah. innovative. He was innovative with that. Yeah, that's, I don't think, that's a good combo. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong at all with that. I mean, that's basically what isn't that what like muscle egg is, or like you know that muscle or, eggs protein, or or like Rich Piana's egg crystal one. Yeah, it's just flavored egg whites. It's the same shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, going back to watching somebody train, I don't. There's literally like not. If you ask me if I want to train with somebody, that's different. This this question for me refers to the question before. Why? Because I'd probably watch some really pretty ladies <laughs> train together. <laughs> so I'm not train. I'm not watching them train because I want to know how they train. I'm yeah, yeah. Watch. Get AZ, fit- <laughs> get AZ fitness back up. <laughs> AZ fitness. Thing. That's who I'm watching. <laughs> Wait, let's do an experiment. What? How many followers does she have right now? No, let's find out. Oh, oh yeah, it might go up like loads. Let's. I wonder. We should, we should, we should, we should get a, uh, a bunch of a bunch of guys Bad. and have them go follow. She's, she's got. Oh, Maybe once a month we should like just pick a random Instagram page. Say everyone follow this person. Give them a boost. Don't say that because now everyone's going to start DMing me and saying they're going to be like they're going to be like one please let it be me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, we should definitely do that, and you should definitely DM for ad like multiple uh, times. Oh, no. Don't, I, uh, if, I get it all the time. I get it yeah. all the time. Even now, people are like, yeah. can you uh, can you follow my page and share this? Yeah, as well? yeah. Oh, she's got that she's got that was me. That was you. She's got uh, uh, me. 144,000 followers. She's doing all right already, then. Yeah, oh, she, she doesn't need our help. Right. She's just had our help, though. Yeah. You're on the page. Uh, well, <laughs> all right. Maybe she'll, help, maybe she'll help the podcast for you. And then... uh, okay. Do you and other pros suffer from occasional swelling with injection sites? If so, how do you deal with this, this please? I don't. Uh, it's been a while actually since I had like that irritated red fucking swelling. If you use the good stuff, I you had don't a, get it. I, I had about five. I had about three or four in a row last week. Really? And I Ooh. took the I took the bottle and I fucking trashed it. And then may, I got may, another may, one. May I ask? Was it a certain compound? Like out of curiosity? Uh, so it was the was it, it was the Master Rom that I was using, and I I just opened a new bottle. First three that came out of it, I'm like, mm, something doesn't feel right. So the next, the fourth time I was due to do it, I opened a new bottle up, tried it, put it in a similar, I put it in my rear delt because it was my rear that was feeling it. Yeah. And it, it was smooth. I'm like, okay, that old one can fuck off. Yeah. So you guys think, and I'm not saying you're wrong, I'm just asking. So you guys think that anytime you get that irritated red swelling, it's because your gear is shit or it's dirty or something wrong with too much alcohol. Yeah, I, I think so. I think there's just yeah. something not quite right with that gear. Yeah, I'm not saying every time, but I know how to majority, jab. majority. You know, I know which muscles can take it, and I know. So, by process of elimination, when 
I've been doing this for a while now. Sometimes, you know, you might put one in wrong and you're like, ah, you feel it going yeah. in wrong, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You cl- you cl- I'm not you talking about... I'm, there, yeah. yeah, I'm not talking about those ones where they bleed and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, this one's going to... Or you catch a nerve going in or something. Oh, something's off. Yeah. These ones, they felt fine going in and then the next day I'm like, God damn, this thing's blown up on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I'm like, something's wrong with the gear. Yeah, yeah I... um. I know there are people out there that that get that from like it's not the same kind of swelling I think this guy's describing, but they get it from like probe. Sometimes probe can be irritating. Um, some obviously trend can be irritating. Isn't I just the, isn't DHB like the one that really ping, ping, hit the pips a lot? DHB. I got, I was. I've never used. I've never used it by. I've never used it either. I don't know. Uh, I used. I used it right after my show, and I was fine with it. Okay. What's DHP? I don't even know what the fuck that is. DHB. Uh, DHB. What is it? Then? It's a. Uh, DHB? It's a box. It's a bo- yeah, it's part of the Bolden owned family, but it's a, was it D? I'm not going to butcher the name. It's uh, okay. Something. DHB. I've it's never, never heard of it. Yeah. It, it, seems like, it seems like a very more modern day thing, like Trestalone, like one of those more recent year things. And somebody's got to hook me up. The DHB. I've never tried I, it. I, it's, I like it a lot. Yeah. I think Jamie Joe Howe used it. He told me he was, you know, kind of he was the first person I knew to run it and said he didn't mind it. Yeah. Um <clears throat> yeah, it's been a while for me. I don't remember the last time I had like a shitty I hate trend though. I get the trend cough sometimes. I haven't done trend since like I was prepping, but I yeah, can't sometimes fucking, it does. I can't fucking stand it. I only like, get that with trend ace. Trend ace is that, but if I use like a I get it from both. I get it from both. See, I don't get the cough. I get a metallic-y taste in my mouth, and my gums feel like they're like just like vibrating. I get that too, and I can't stand yeah. both, both so, of them. Yeah, you know, like if you drink a can of coke and you get the fur on your teeth. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly that. what you're talking about. Yeah, that's what I kind of get. Um, would you rather have the capability to grow a full head of hair or a nice beard? I'd love to have my hair back. I would love to have my hair back as well. But there's a lot of people envious of you for your beard. My beard's shit. I don't know why everybody thinks about it. My beard's not anything special. J- ben, uh, Luke used to think it was crap. Luke's yeah, but that's because like... his was big. He's just, he's just big dick, little dick. He's just been like, yeah, he, my, he was my beard's beard. fucking massive. <laughs> Luke was a beard snob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He used to... High, he, high expectations. He used to tell me to grow it up higher. And I'm like, how fucking high do you want me to grow it? Like, cover my he whole like, thing? He likes the whole Wolverine look. Like the whole fucking yeah, but mine, show. mine will literally grow like up to here. Yeah, like you won't see anything. It'll just be like my eyes showing. That's it. So it might be a better look. Me. It'd be like like wearing a balaclava. Fuck you, Ben. <laughs> um. Yeah, no. I, if I could have my hair back, that would be the way to go, for sure. What I, hairstyle would you have? Like, I know we've done hairs. I know we've done a lot of hair talk, but would you just have like a? Would you have like a French crop? Would you have? A, I don't know what you call that over there because we. I think I'm. Things. I think I'm too old for the mohawk now, so I don't think that would be a thing anymore. I did because I used to rock the mohawk like a while I'd back. Like to you, I'd, I'd like to see you with curtains. What's curtains? <laughs> curtains like Backstreet Boys, like just Wait, like boy like... <laughs> bands, <laughs> just where they're split in the middle. And down you know, you know now that you, you know when you do this, the body bodybuilding of bulk guys is going to go make it, and he's going to. I post. want to see you with curtains. I, I see that uh, for me. It's the was it Leonardo DiCaprio in Titanic? That haircut. yes, yes, that haircut. That's the haircut. <laughs> Maybe would, a few highlights, a few highlights in there as well. I would have just mm. a fade, man, like a nice fade with like a little bit of fucking, you know, like a Brad Pitt kind of haircut. I can imagine you have a ponytail. You'd be like that. It remind me of like um, Antonio Banderas. <laughs> Brad Pitt and Brad Pitt and Troy. That's who you want. You're I, just, I feel you like know what? You're just Desperado. You're just saying different things now, so that the guy makes all of them. No, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Honestly, I can imagine you coming in with a box, a guitar box, and your guns are in there. I can imagine that. You know, like in Desperado. You've seen Desperado. Surely. I've, seen, I've seen Desperado. Yes. I can. The music, like you playing a, and then yeah, I can see that. I can see that. You'd be good in that. <laughs> all right. Anyways, what would you have? I see your hair being curly for some reason. Mine. Yeah. The only reason you think that is because of this now. If yeah. this wasn't hitting you, yeah, it's fucked. It's made me look like I should have some really ginger curly hair. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, think I know, like... I know, I know. But I don't naturally. I'd really, <laughs> it's, um, I'd really block it in the French it's Seth, it's Seth Rogen's under that hat, isn't he? Yeah, like I see like a red, like a uh, like an afro. I would, I would be happy with that because it's the least hair. Like that would be good. Would at you... least I would have hair. So you'd rather have any hair than no hair? Pretty much, because I could dye it. I could yeah, dye it black. You could just change the way it looks. Yeah. I'll just dye my beard and hair black and then get yeah. tan. And then I'll look like Fuad Dabia. <laughs> <laughs> a few sunbeds, some there. 
You're an asshole. You're an asshole. Uh, and of our only cycle, is that useless or good for beginners? No, I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's bad, but that's just me trying to be conscious on people and their needs. Phil Viz said something on this podcast that I need somebody co- to confirm or deny or whatever. Just give just give your opinion on it. Mm-hmm. Phil basically said that Anivar is as powerful as Anadrol, but without the fucking without the water gains. And I'm like, well, I, that seems very far fetched to me. I think what he's trying to say, and I and I have to agree with him if it's this standpoint, is that if you actually use Anivar and have a look at how much you can perform in the gym. Your performance in terms of strength and repetition will shoot up. It's a very good performance drug. So okay. I think what he's trying to highlight is the fact that, like Anadrol, you would use for a strength phase. Yeah. Anavar is a good counterpart if you're trying to be a lot more cautious, and it does work. But it's well. not. I guess what my point is is it's not pill for pill. Like you're gonna have to. No, take no. Market. You're gonna you have to probably take like uh, probably a hundred milligrams to get the same as twenty five milligrams of Anadrol. You're right. I imagine. Maybe but, not, maybe not that drastic, but I see what you're saying. I, w- I would uh, rather use Anavar over any other oral. I think. So I'm not. I'm not dis- I, wait a minute. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying, how many Anavar would you have to take to equal the benefit you would get from one Anadrol? Well, I just said four times. I think it's a four time. I think four times. Four times. I would say for every 25 milligram. And this is me. Yeah, just but, but, guessing but it's that's a that's a that's a really like big guess because. 50 yes. mil that means 50 milligrams of anadrol you need 200 milligrams of anavar yeah i would never do I that would, man i wouldn't either that's but yeah. i wouldn't want to do 50, i wouldn't even want to do 50 megs of anadrol i think the most you wouldn't do 50 megs of anadrol why not really, i don't because my blood pressure is not low as it is it would fuck me well i don't mean now I, I used to earlier in my career i wouldn't now but yeah i've never taken more than i think the most anavar i've ever taken taken is 100 milligrams and how did you feel it was during a prep so i can't you know, I you're felt great. Fucked. I felt great, but like you're taking so many other things that you're like, you don't know, yeah. like. But I got to piss. Sorry. I, go ahead. That's right. I, I, I don't. I think I found like an around sixty to hundred milligrams is is pretty strong. That's what I'm saying. Like I couldn't do four times the amount of anadrol. I think if I took like just forty to sixty milligrams, I would be. I think I would notice a difference. But then, do you know the reason I say that's because if I took fifty milligram of anadrol a day, I'd be depressed in three days because it hits me hard. So. You'd be, depressed? Said, You'd be depressed? Yeah, yeah. It flattens out my feelings. It makes me feel... Does really it really? Strong. Yeah, very strong. Um, never thought it, of it, that. Like, it nullifies how I feel, and which is horrible because I can feel it happening. Yeah. And I don't like feeling like un, uh, un, 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 unemotional. It takes away my emotion. It makes me really flat. I don't know I've why. Never, I've never thought of that with Andrew. I feel that way with EQ, uh, with Deca. Deca does that to me. Yeah, I, I don't know what... You know, I don't know the, like the... I don't know the structures of these chemicals and why they're similar and why they have the same yeah. effects, but... Maybe there's yeah. something similar going on. Um, yeah. Well, the DECA thing is more anxiety. It's not as much depression or... Yeah. But I've never... I don't remember... I mean, it's been a long time since I did Anadrol, but I don't remember feeling depressed on it or or having, like, flat emotions. I don't know. See, see, I only know because me and my friend, uh, Luke, one of my old friends who used to compete, we started Anadrol, the same Anadrol, the same day, and within three days, we both said, we both feel fucking suicidal. Let's get off it. Really? Better. Yeah, it was like, Did you notice that wow. or no? Do you know what? I'd have to run it again. I haven't taken any draw since maybe three or four years. I can't remember. I know I didn't enjoy it, but I've only ever used it in a pretty sloppy off season. Can I? Can I say um, something? Because I, I just, went. Oh, sorry. I just didn't realize you were still talking. Sorry, Ben. Go ahead, James. Anadrol is is a good drug. Ten days out from a show for the last ten days. Yeah. Mm. I've heard of people doing that. Yeah, it yeah. works. It will give you a fuller look. Yeah, yeah, it definitely works. Yeah, I never tried. Never tried that either. My, well, Steve Avery, my old, you know, the guy that I, I put up his posing routine on my Instagram. Yeah, yeah, you talked to him. Young. Yeah, yeah. So that, those guys, a lot of the time, pre-show, last ten days, they're doing an roll load one one a day up to the show. Yeah, I also don't think those guys are. Carb loading quite as heavily. No, as you don't have to. Some guys do. no. With the anadrol like present, you don't. You don't have to eat the same amount of foods to get full. Yeah, that's what I mean. If you try to do anadrol, if you just added that in with a crazy high amount of carbs, you just you're likely gonna fucking yeah. top. Yeah. Maybe that's why sometimes we spill a bit more because the carb route maybe isn't as good as the anadrol route because if you can eat less and keep your stomach flat, and anadrol can tick over the fullness aspect. But I'm not fucking saying that's the way. 
and again, I'm not saying take drugs, kids. You know, it's not that. I'm just saying from my own experience, I remember actually looking really good doing a show with the Anadrol load, and I didn't have to eat much in the load. I was only having about 300, 300 grams of carbs a day probably for the last week, and there was no, I didn't go higher than that, but I ran Anadrol, and I was popping on stage. I wonder how um, I wonder how Patrick feels about that. Yeah, I'd be interested to ask him. Ask him, see oh, what he thinks. That's interesting. From that, he, yeah, because he's from that era. You know, he's from the yeah. same. Well, we've spoken. I'm not. I haven't spoken to him in terms of specifics with uh, a prep, but I know that he anadrol is certainly a, a compound that he's comfortable using and and would exploit at different mm. times. It's been around a long time. It's a proven drug. It's, tr- it's kind of trusted in terms of, you know. Uh, it's age. It's been around since the heyday of bodybuilding. So, yeah. Uh, if money wasn't an option and you could sponsor one athlete from each weight class, who would you choose and why? Uh, I'm just going to say this. There are companies that sponsor people based on status. I don't think we're going to do that. I think, I think when we start signing like big name athletes or bigger name athletes, uh, we're going to probably sign people that fit kind of my, my, my feeling about bodybuilding, I, I guess. Brand. Not just the, well, the brand is me. Yeah, that's it. The brand's an extension of you. The so brand, you. the brand is kind of my culture. Like that's how yeah, I feel yeah. about how I feel about bodybuilding. So you're, you're, you're trying to keep a culture alive and in a sense, that's what you're trying to breathe more of the culture into what we do. So if you <laughs> yeah. can have people that represent that, you're doing yeah, like. I think me and you know me and Ben have talked about this. Like there was a specific athlete that came up that was available and he wasn't signed by anybody. He's like, What do you think about this guy? And my exact words were, I think that guy's incredible and he's gonna be one of the best bodybuilders on the scene one day. And but is. I but I don't think I think that's just me paying a guy to come put my stuff on his fucking it yeah, is yeah. I don't want a guy who's just gonna I gotta pay and he's gonna be like, Look at my shit. And it's not it's really gonna it's gonna run it's gotta run deeper than that, isn't it? For me, it does. For me, I, I would rather just be the guy until I find the guy who can also be like me than just sign yeah, a bunch of, I think, than just I sign think a bunch of people. Animal, I think what Animal did in 2000s, which is really establish athletes that matched. And, and it, it just, when you thought about one, you thought about the other, right? You say, did you say Animal? You about, yeah, they did it right yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Like when you thought about the athlete, instantly you thought about Animal. And when you thought about Animal, you instantly thought about Evan, yeah. Frank, yeah, yeah, Frank, you know, and uh, Eric, 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 yeah. yeah. But those guys all also, okay. Number one, it's it's two things. One, animals marketing was awesome. Like they were very good at getting the culture out. Yeah. Um, and but also, like you said, all the guys matched personality wise, like Evan and Frank and uh, Eric and Roman. Like they all kind of have the same feel about them. Yeah, and Jason. So, Jason Ha was on there. Jason Ha was there for a little while. Like, yeah. So, yeah, I, I wanted to say I want to do the same kind of thing. I want to b- bring on people who represent the same attitude. I guess. Yeah. So, I have answers that question last uh, I have lost seventy pounds and gained it back over and over for ten years. How do you stop binge eating for good? So stop the discipline. I would say stop trying to lose weight and learn how to eat better. I think what yeah. people do, I think what people do is they try and lose 70 pounds. So they go and cut all their calories and then reward they, themselves. They do a shitload of cardio and then they lose the 70 pounds and then they can't sustain that lifestyle. So they just gain it all back. Yeah. The, the extremities of how he got there were probably very extreme and unsustainable. Yeah. Whereas yeah. like you said, if you just concentrate on becoming a better person, in your diet approach. Yeah. The, the, I'll give the you, weight will gradually move. I'll give you an example. So my brother, my oldest brother wants to lose some weight. So we did it really extreme one year. And he lost all the weight. Like I gave him like a real bodybuilding diet, but then he put put it back all back on. And now I'm like, you got to do it differently. Like you need to do a daily diet that fits your life, but he's not as happy because he's only losing like a pound a week. But and I'm like, yeah, that that will be the best way. That's what I'm trying to express is if you do it that way, it's going to be slower, but you can sustain it over a long period of time. Shit, that's fifty over fifty pounds in a year. If you can keep, yeah, Yeah, right, and it won't hurt as much on the way down. Yeah, yeah. It hurts but, to lose weight quick, but I think it hurts them because they want to lose it. I, I, okay, it won't yeah. hurt. It won't hurt physically, but it hurt mentally. Yeah, yeah. So they, Cause, it's weighing up because yeah. they're like, man, I didn't eat anything bad all week, and I only lost a pound, and then mm-hmm. it, it makes them stressed out. And I'm like, no, no, just one pound after another, and after two months, you you know, 
you've lost 10 pounds now you look good and yeah. you didn't you didn't suffer physically doing it yeah. so i think that's a really big problem when people do that yo-yo shit yeah just don't yo-yo basically uh there's no point in any more questions because there's so many good ones already okay sorry i didn't even meet i just don't know why i read that <laughs> <laughs> what do you think bodybuilding must do to become as popular as other major sports i don't think it I can be i, I think no. it's i, I think uh, no i do think bodybuilding is because weight training weight training is as popular as everything else it's, it's just the become that way yeah yeah, it's just that title of the bodybuilding part hasn't become as popular. It's almost like that's had to be put in the shadows a little bit uh, in order for all the other things to be a mainstream approach. So looking at Gymshark and things like that, yeah, that's all in the mainstream. But that is, the people that are doing all that shit are training how bodybuilders train. It's just for some reason, unfortunately, bodybuilding doesn't get given the credit for being the, the, the root of all of those things. Well, can I... Can I, I, gonna... I just want to say this. So he's talking about bodybuilding as a sport. Mm. You're James, you're talking about bodybuilding as a lifestyle. I as, think yeah, I, as, as a culture. Yeah, but I think bodybuilding as a as a lifestyle and a culture is probably more popular than it's ever been. Everybody's doing yeah. it. Everybody's posting their workouts online. Everybody's bodybuilding as a sport will never be popular because it's boring as fuck. It's not only that, it's you're gonna struggle to get mainstream networks to plug something which is well aside quite from, obvious quite yeah. obviously drug based no no but let's assume let's assume in 50 years everybody's like ah steroids are okay i still don't think bodybuilding will be popular because if you're a regular person like when i talk to my family that's just a regular people and they go to bodybuilding shows they're like i don't know why you didn't win you didn't look any different than that guy yeah. or that guy or that guy they, like they all look the same and also it's not only that they all look the same. The sport is kind of slow and moving if you don't know what's going on. Do you know why? Yeah, but like this imagine a imagine a normal person sitting through a three hour prejudging. It's dull. Wait, but I, I had the same thing when I was watching a foot. I watched an American football game here, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. It's all boring to me because I don't understand. Yeah. It. Well, that's the thing. It comes down to. I'm like, I don't know what I'm saying. fucking watching. That. Like, and then my wife and my my uh, father in law are like, oh, did you see this guy do this and that? And I'm like, nope, didn't see shit. I don't know what I'm fucking looking at. Yeah, I think it's bodybuilding is just, th- it's a fucking pageant, isn't it? But wait a minute, I think it's easier to teach football, American football, than it is to teach bodybuilding. It's hard for me to sit down to somebody and say, "Look, look at the guy's symmetry, look at his muscularity." It takes a long time to really get that eye for who looks better than who. Whereas yeah, football, yeah. I can say, "Look, they got to get the ball. They have four downs to get the ball ten yards before they get another ten yards, and they got to get to the end zone." Like it's very one plus one equals two there's no subjective thought whereas in yeah, body, no. whereas in bodybuilding it's more opinion not necessarily mm. like putting a ball in a hoop like a basketball bodybuilding, yeah, no, but, isn't, ma- bodybuilding isn't matter of fact yeah that's what i mean like when you when you're watching a basketball game you're like okay the team that scores the most points in the basket wins so it's easy to cheer it's like yeah <laughs> yeah it's not, in it, in it. but with listen, bodybuilding it's like you know how I give you a perfect example? Listen to this. So I had a strongman competition at one of my bodybuilding shows. It's more popular than the show, right? When they did it, dude, the crowd all of a sudden came alive. You know why? Because all they knew was that guy's got to lift 600 pounds off the ground. That guy's right. got to lift 700 pounds off the ground. That guy's, they knew it was just ad- addition of numbers. Yeah, whereas, yeah, yeah. whereas with bodybuilding, you're like, well, I don't know why that guy looks better than that guy. And I think that guy looks better than that guy, but that guy's winning. And then it just get, all gets confusing to people because it's just all subjective. But then also, do you not think a part of me likes the fact that it's not mainstream? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like the, the cult of bodybuilding. I don't, yeah, am yeah, I good? Yeah. I don't want you to like it. I don't want you to like it. <laughs> especially, you don't, especially, you don't get it. especially ben, Ben's especially that guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not. I don't, really, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. No. Bodybuilding is a weird old thing, isn't it? J- uh, J- James, would you like bodybuilding to be mainstream uh no 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 because i think there's a lot of people out there that could be far better than me if they're aware of it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if they knew this if they knew about this shit then i'll be fucked i always there's gonna, be a lot, there's gonna be a lot of raw talent out there and i don't want them to know about this shit have you ever seen cost. have you ever seen somebody in the gym and went man if that guy put on 20 pounds he'd be fucking crazy when we're when we're open nearly every day because, yeah. like I say, Kings I is very... full of Kings is yeah. full of these little like 
and I don't mean to be racist, these little black freaks that are fucking yeah, 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 yeah. Un- I, unintentionally, and they're just like, yeah. 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 Well, I live in a very multicultural area where there's people from everywhere, and you see the best of all genetics in there. And like I say, some yeah. of my, my black friends in particular are just so built. It's just like, what the fuck? And, it, and half of my friends lift like shit. And I'm like, you look like that when you lift like that's shit. What, if you knew what yeah. you were doing, that's what I mean. They, 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 smoke they, everybody. Yeah. They look great by accident, and you're like, mother yeah, fuck. Mate, <laughs> um, but then I, I got a couple of like, again, we were talking about Middle Eastern guys earlier. I got a couple of guys in there that are Middle Eastern, and they're kind of like, they just like men's physique. They don't actually like bodybuilding, but if they wish to be a bodybuilder, their genetics are so good, they could be an amazing bodybuilder yeah. as well. Yeah, they got the roundness, the bellies are great, the conditions amazing. You know what um, I find? Yeah. You know what I? You know what I find? And this is, I don't care if it sounds racist. I think Arab guys have a lot of thickness black guys have the roundness yeah does that make sense when i yeah. see air when i see arab guys they are genetically seem thicker they can be thick bodybuilders mm. but the black guys have the nicer shape like the rounder shape the the tape is the thing that my my friends who my black friends mostly stands out to me is is the ratio from the waist to the shoulders that thing is what that that what sets off it's like but, coleman in his younger years when you look at coleman's taper back in the day yeah, he was powerlifting and bodybuilding. It's just like Rhea Gale, Rhea Gale. You can't have that taper that she has. Yeah. That is, mm-hmm. you can't, that if you ain't got it, you ain't got it. But doesn't the roundness of the muscle look different to you? Yes. But that on top of the taper is yeah, just it's crazy. even more. Yeah. It's, it's always like their thing. chest. It's always their chest as well. And they are like, just this hang on a peck. Even if they've got muscle nowhere else, they've got full chest. You're like, yeah, full oh, pecs. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, my, my, my Asian friends, Tend to have really good lower bodies, massive legs and massive calves. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed that too. I just got fucked everywhere, didn't I? I'm a mishmash right now. I didn't get any of the good body parts. <laughs> Fucking I don't bullshit. know. You got a few good body. You got good shoulders. No, you have good legs. No. He said no. I said I no. He was, I said his good legs. I didn't say. I thought his shoulders were good. What do you think his best body part is? I think his legs, his quads. Don't do this. Don't do this. I don't. I don't. I haven't have nominated myself to be critiqued. We're, we're just talking about you, like. Uh, I, I, I think shoulders. I think you have good shoulders. You think his shoulders are better than his quads? Well, they're on par. I think he's got good quads and shoulders. Yeah, I think probably I agree with you. Those are two best body parts. Yeah. What, what's his worst body part? Um, one. Ham- I think hamstrings are. And my hamstrings are starting to show. To be fair, like it's, again, your worst body parts are still improving, so it's not disrespectful. It's just saying, so, <laughs> man, yeah. it doesn't matter what we say, man. It doesn't. It's it's not going to be good or bad. It just like your back. I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Your back's been improving, um, but yeah, back and hams, which is most people's weakness, is the two areas that I. Well, that, that's why I said earlier, my my two most frequent body parts are back and hamstrings every single exactly. day because they need it. I don't know if, what I don't know how you guys feel. I hate being rated or dissected. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to know about it. Like well, yet, we, we did the show last week with Ian and, and uh, Jay, Ian and Sergio. Yeah. And they're like, "Okay, oh, hey, we're gonna we're gonna critique our own physiques." Oh no. And I was like, "Oh fuck." <laughs> no. Mate, so, you, so what was I'm the critique I'm for okay. the others? I want to know. Um, I think I think everybody Sir, went pretty. Sergio more back. I think we said low lat for Sergio yeah. and Ian it was low. Sergio's so lat. big and so tall. He's so big. Yeah. If he actually. If magic, Imagine Sergio with Ronnie Coleman lats. Well, mm-hmm. honestly, I think both of them, the main critique was just they need more lower lat. So, but it's you know just, what? It yeah. never phases me. Do you know what? Do you know why it doesn't phase me? And I, I was only joking about it. You always can pick me apart because anything you guys say will be better than what I see and comment on myself when I look at my own. No, pictures. no, no. Wait, you misunderstood. No I, one. I don't care if pe- people critique me all the time. I mean, like in this setting with, yeah. my, with my friends, I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. I just don't worry about it. Let's just not talk about it. You know what I mean? It's it's different. <laughs> oh no! I it no, no, interests no, no, no. interest, it interests interest me more what you boys think than what Joe fifty thousand people on Instagram think. I hear that. Yeah, I don't know. You know what's really fucking weird? I don't like looking at my pictures, and I don't like listening to the sound of my voice. And I have a podcast. Where sure, that's fine. Yep. Yeah. If it, oh, you do have to watch it back. You're, you're, I, say, I don't watch any you're, of this. you're living in the presence. You're trying just to talk, and then you'll never look. Do you ever look back at this? The podcast? He has to. He, yeah, has, to, he only, has to upload it. Only when, I, yeah, when I'm doing the timestamps, I have to go through it. But Oh, you do the timestamps. I, I do. I do everything. The I'm only sorry. thing... The only, <laughs> 
the only thing I um the only time I watch it back is if I'm watching like something like you know when bodybuilding and bollocks puts up those edits where he clips everything together. Yeah, just got full, yeah, it's just funny. They're fucking funny, man. So I'll watch yeah. all those, but I don't ever I don't watch the podcast back or anything. Uh, anyway, we'll do one more, one more because this I think it's a good one. It's a little weird, but it's a good one. Yep. If you could create your own village, well, how would it be? Such as who would live with you? What business is there? Would it be above ground or underground or tree houses? I don't know why that makes sense. Uh, what would the Fuad Abiyad kingdom look like? So we'll do it for all three of us. I want to visit Fuad Abiyad kingdom and see what it's like. <laughs> I mean, Domino's, McDonald's, there'll be, a lot, of, Starbucks. There'll be a lot of fast food places. <laughs> all Starbucks I can see, down there. I, I, when I think of kingdoms, I just think of Super Mario and all the little, the, little mushroom Goombas, you know, the little. <laughs> The little, you know, the little things. That's all yeah. I can think about. And I can imagine Fuad in the middle of this this mountain top and loads of goombas around it, <laughs> loads of little mushroom people. My, Basically calling you Willy village, Wonka. Yeah, I know he is. My village would have lots of good restaurants. It would have lots of good gyms. Uh, that's really all I care about. Wait, your village only needs one gym. The no, village. no. How big is your village? Is it a city? It's not a village, mate. <laughs> That's not a village. It's a, it's a city. He's, he's making a city. It's <laughs> got an airport. Uh, a village should only have like no, one of these things, like, shouldn't it? So it should have like one, fi- yeah, one fishmongers, yeah. one KFC. You know, oh, okay, okay, one, I see. I one see. cinema. What, so we can't have everything. You have to choose some things or can I have everything? Let's, can you be limited to say five, go five, five yeah, major go five. things? Because otherwise five it's things. too much. Okay, yeah. I need, I need, I need. I need two gyms though. I need like a cushy one and a hardcore one. A cushy one. What's that? Yeah, for? because I don't want I don't want everybody to come to the hardcore one. I want half the people to. No, go. There's only like there's only four hundred people in your village anyway. Why don't you have one gym with two floors? Upstairs is for cushy, downstairs is for hardcore. Okay, we can do that. Yeah. That's fair. Split the gym. That's fair. Okay, so one gym. Uh, I need to have a McDonald's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's sensible. I think that's I think that's good. I need a Whole Foods. It's got to have a Whole Foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if I need a mall. I'm trying to think if I need a mall. Why? Well, no, no, you're, you're, quite, no, you're, you're mall's a multitude. Yeah, mall's a multitude yeah, of things. That's a piss take. That's a cheat. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah, because you've got one mall. You've got one mall and you've got 200 fucking shops. It does not count. Exactly. No, no. no. You have to have like one. Like you, you picked Whole Foods. So Whole Foods you could get your food from and your toiletries probably. No, you can't get can, I, can, I order on, can I order stuff online or does it no, just... Like no, there's thing? no access from the outside world. Okay, then I need a, I need a diesel for like clothing. You need a petrol carriage. What was that like a gas station? Yeah, you need yeah. one. If you ain't got one, you're gonna a run petrol out. carriage. So, yeah. so, so you've you've got one wait, gym, one McDonald's, one petrol. You've only got two things left, mate. Yeah, but hang on. If you got Tesco Metro, and I, you've and got, I, and got, and I got, you got, got a and food. food. Oh, no, so you've no, got no. one left. No, no wait, one. James. James, you can have a, you can have one of those. Um, BP garages with the Marks and Spencer's food in it. Oh, that that would be the best. Done. And it's got Wild Bean Cafe as well, so you can get your coffee. Yes, there you go. Yeah. No, I need to have a Whole Foods. So you got one left then, man. So I got a Whole Foods. I got a gas station that has a Starbucks in it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we'll let you have that one. I got a McDonald's and I got a gym. You need a home. Well, the home doesn't count. <laughs> home does. Is... Yeah. No, we're... It no, does? It's about retail. We're talking... No, no, your homes are given. You got somewhere to live. Oh. I Otherwise, a... you can just set bed in the shop in the gym. Honestly, the gym. honestly, I need a nice restaurant. That would be number five. Yeah, it's so a date night Saturdays. Or I have to have a nice restaurant for me and my wife to go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got a sushi. I got a sushi restaurant. Is my number one thing going in. I can't do sushi restaurant because my wife. My I got wife's a sushi. Not sushi. Mm. Okay, I got a sushi restaurant and I got a cheesecake factory, and now I'm done. So you just, no gym. <laughs> no. Oh no no! I got okay. I got <laughs> right. I've got a gym. Sushi restaurant, cheesecake factory, um, and a Walmart. I don't need to spend. Full- the Walmart, you can get fucking everything. You can get guns in Walmart. You can get ATVs in Walmart. You can get everything. You're sorted. That's true. Eh? That's cheap. Costco. That's Costco. I'll get a Costco. I'm going to get a Costco. Why is it cheap? I should have picked yeah, Costco. I love Costco. I didn't Costco's Costco. got a few things. You can get your electrical stuff. No, you, no, no. Non flashy food ad went Whole Foods. <laughs> <laughs> he, wanted, he wanted that expensive fillet steak. Flashy Ben went Walmart. I love fucking. What did that tell you? I love Whole Foods. It's my fucking favorite place. 
Yeah, I like Whole Foods. When I was over there, I did like Whole Foods. And the other one that I liked was on the, I think when I was in, they only have Whole Foods in certain states. And then the other side, they had something else. Sprouts? Trader Mark, Trader, Trader Sprouts. Joe's. It was Sprouts. Oh, Sprouts? Okay. I never heard, that of, was I never heard of Sprouts. Yeah. Sprout, if you ever go uh, somewhere in America, that's Sprouts. Sprouts, Sprouts. You'll like it. I, Ooh, I got, I I got another think good a, shout. I didn't think of Costco. That's a good one. I got James. James, James you might be moving on this one. A nice little tea rooms. Oh yeah, a little like Dottie's tea house. Yeah, they do, you can get you get a good breakfast in there as well. You can get your. I can have spilt. I would have spilt milk. There you go. I have my place. What else? That, what I'll else? The top of the village. What else is so, spilled milk? What? What's spilled milk? Is it just a restaurant coffee my, place. My, yeah, it's like my coffee cafe. Okay, so milk. you have yeah. Massage parlor. Like a like a well, uh, like a rubber, yeah. like a a rubber tie, tug, a, like a tie a massage. Tie, a tie massage. <laughs> yeah, um, strip club. You have a strip club. <laughs> yeah. a gym. Wait, wait. So, 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 is Janica in this village or not? Yeah, that's what I was going. Yeah. He's single. I, I'm making her work in the strip club to make me. A Do you want, oh, what about a foot spa, James? Do you want a foot spa? <laughs> uh, no, because the massage place can massage my feet for me and just do stuff. <laughs> You know, like the tire places do all sorts. They'll get okay, you a so what do you say? It's so a spill milk, massage, uh, strip, strip club, club gym. gym. Gym, and then uh, obviously uh, Costco. That's a good yes. one. James is I got the best. I've got a good village. Got James a good village. got the best village. <laughs> You're just me a batch of... She's I'll invite you to my village. village. <laughs> I'm going to hang out in fucking James's village. Fuck this place. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be able to like make a sim of this now, like on the computer. You know that sim... Um, Did you ever play that? I, play, I used to yeah, play that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like, I I feel like we should lot. be able to make that now and be able to control our characters. I love that game, actually. Yeah. That's one of the few games I did like. See? Yeah, I might you, should, should, you, should, you, guys, you guys had more Wait, time. Wait, you Yeah. Well, because you jumped in the question early and started answering early rather than say, Ben, what do you think, James? What do you got involved too quick. I got excited. I got excited. McDonald's. Yeah. You were premature. If you, know I got a, you know what you can get? You can get a Walmart that has a McDonald's in it. Yeah, they do that. Vasta here. Uh, our, our one's got Subway in it. Uh, uh, we got that, I've, got I've got an Asda near me that's got McDonald's in it, which is more um, old Asda. Yeah. Yeah. You should be you should be able to set up like a server. I don't know gaming, so I'm making this up man, my fucking ass. But kind of like uh World of Warcraft where all the viewers from the podcast go on and create a little character and then we all live in this little world. Yeah. And everyone comes what to James's Village because the strip club. Yeah, James <laughs> Village would be the most popular. And I'm, and I'm sitting there with all my money from the strip club I've been making. I'll be king of the land. Kingpin James. Yeah. I would have I would have said that, but I would be divorced then. It would be like my sit my be, my wife would be gone. It'd be like my village. Ah, uh, the myself. benefits of not being married. Yannicka would leave you. She wouldn't stay with you. <laughs> I Ask told her. you I'm having a I'm a, I've got her there doing overtime to make me some extra cash. Is she gonna be a waitress or is she actually no, she's, she's gonna dance? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay I'll pay her to dance for me. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's how you keep the relationship spicy. Oh fuck. We have a gas meeting, don't we, Ben? Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got, um, I've got a phone call with, um, with a, uh, I've got a phone call with a fan, and he doesn't know we're going to call him. What are you talking about? How'd that happen? Rudy sorted it out. Oh, so it's like, so, a, is it like a get? Is this a, a win? Did like he a win gift? something? Yeah, I don't know. It's just like a little gift. When they call him, he's not. He's going to be like, shit. What the hell's happening? And then his favorite bodybuilders are going to talk to him. Is that awkward? No, I don't care. I say, all right, bro. I did that once. I did that once with a fan. He said, "Hey, man, do you have? Do you could? I think somebody's girlfriend bought him, like a twenty-minute Zoom call or something with me." That's cool. I didn't even know what to say because I don't really do that. But I'm like, okay. I'm like, if you really want to. I, the thing is, I because I where I stream and stuff now, and I sit on the computer talking to people. Yeah. Quite a lot that I don't know. I'm. I, I quite like it now. It's not that I don't like it. It just it's kind of awkward at first. Like the person's nervous, and I'm like, I don't know what to say because I don't know them, and then. Oh, I don't know. I, that, it, that got, it got it got more it got more comfortable as he kind of calmed down. But yeah. I was like, it's just a, it's a kind of a weird thing at first. Yeah, and so, it's weird, like because the things that make me feel uh, uh, some things would not affect others, but this that scenario, I'm really comfortable. With. I wonder why. I don't know. I don't are you know. on? Are you on with other people, or is this you and that guy one on one? I actually don't know right now. I don't know. Because if, if I was if I if it was like the three of us and somebody came on, you feel cool. I feel, I'd be fine, right? But if it's just yeah. me and me and this other person, I don't know one on one. I'd just, be like, just like literally, just like, sorry. <laughs> what's going on today? Yeah. <laughs> Especially if there's a massive age difference. What if they're like a 14 year old kid? They yeah. have nothing in common with you. And you're like, listen to this. I got a bodybuilder that I've been talking to 
that doesn't speak fluent English. Okay. That I'm going to try and have on the podcast. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's going to be, I'm going to try and is have his, a, Is his first name big? I can't tell you anything. All I can say is <laughs> uh, it would be very interesting. And I think I'm going to have to have a translator, which is going to be weird because I've never done that on the podcast. I think that's very cool. Very professional. That works. Is, wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be fucking cool though? Like it, I got to find somebody. Like, it'd be I, like the news when you have the person doing sign language. Uh, <laughs> Well, Ariel, <laughs> no, it wasn't it? Ariel Hawani no, does it. Ariel Hawani does it. You've seen him, right? Well, the only one I've seen like that is Joe Rogan did one with uh, Joel, Joel, Joel Romero, and he had his buddy there. I can't remember his fucking name right now. Uh, Joey Diaz. Joey Diaz translated it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I think that's actually kind of a cool idea. So I don't know. Try it out and see if it's shit or not. I think it'll be good. Yeah. Anyway, listen. You're you're think you're, you're gonna think it's shit anyway, so that's a given. I think they're yeah. all shit. I think every single. <laughs> He'll message us after. I don't know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to post this. What do you think? Shut up. Put it up. Just put it up. So yeah, put it up, and it's too late to do anything about it. I don't know why I have that fucking problem. I think I, I, it doesn't matter anyway. Um, yeah, it's just there. Okay, you guys have a good day, man. And uh, I'm gonna speak to this kid. Yeah, we'll all catch up soon. All right, bro. Um, Okay, brother. Take care, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends, and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.